see. I didn't go live. I've been talking to myself, saying that this isn't working, and I didn't even go live. Very weird, weird, uh, weird situ. Guess there'll be a little purple. Everybody needs purple. All right. So um, you probably didn't hear that horrible Christmas music, which is good. Let's just go. I I expect. Let me check if he's called me. He hasn't. I don't know if Ham's going to call in. So if you're hoping for that, you might be disappointed. But I have a feeling he will. He can't resist. Um, sticking it to the shorts uh, let's just go through some of the prices and then we can talk about anything uh, finger is 394.5 it's uh 300 000 shares traded uh, logic yesterday had some strength it's three and a half cents but but it's low volume nineteen thousand shares and the spread is massive. The bid is 0 0.025. The ask is 0 0.035. But I think logic is starting to show the logic of, of being a end-of-the-year acquisition for the intrepid uh, trader because I think that'll have a January, February, March, but probably January rally. GDC's been pushed down. It's at 272. I bought mine, my paltry amount at 309. 309. So I'm down. <clears throat> 272 to 285. Let's see if there's any news. <clears throat> Oh, it has an innovative marketing approach. Okay. That's always killer news when you put, put out something that's just fill the shorts destroy. All right. Uh, so I did GG's logic. All right. Let's look at MMAT. 0 0.0701 in the red. Not hopeful. MULN. 0 0.082 in the red. Not hopeful. ZJYL, way in the red, but it's still 87.75. GTII, showing some pounceability. It's 0 0.42 bid to 0.4499 ask. Last trade, 0 0.4251. So that may have had its capitulation the other day. And that may be showing some strength. Vocal, 0 0.0083. Not in the strongest position. CAUD, 130. So it's down a penny. 130 by 131 was as, was as high as 134. Look all washed out. And then the uh, the last one I have here is CLNV. I, it's not like that's up. That's in the green. 0 0.0011, 0 0.04 to 0 0.042. These are all in the bargain basement of the stock market. We don't have many trading days left. We're here. So we have one full day tomorrow. Probably dead markets on the 22nd and then really just not much left to get through and the selling pressure should be off i don't know why my computer is freezing that's that's got to be my number one priority is to buy a new something new something to get rid of this computer um 
All right, let me see what everybody's saying. Um, I'll start from the top since I don't think there's many people watching. I should be able to get to the bottom pretty quickly. Hey, Carnegie's painter. Good day. Good day, Mike. Good day, Mike. Mad Gun, <laughs> second. Ambi, thank you. Pilot to the moon, thank you. Uh, yeah, Merry Christmas to everybody. Um, hey, Red Pepper. Hey, Timinator, Sapinen, Brandel, you, Rondell, you, my eyesight. Um, Rocket Man, Merry Christmas. Good afternoon, Dips Patel. Merry Christmas, Bill. Hola, T Man. Good after, well, good afternoon from here, John. Um, you, you always have nice weather. We have nice weather today. Tiny bit nippy, though. Yeah, I think Ham will join. I just, we don't have a scheduled uh, time or confirmation. But I have a, oh, I should turn my phone over so I can see it when it rings. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't like to bother him you know he's he's got a family and it's christmas and it's other things going on hey the one <laughs> great picture little bambina i think hey lisa kaufman good afternoon how are you Two days all of them gone Nothing but blue skies from now on. Brandon Jun Judkins, hello. I had a I had a friend in the business named Judkins. He was a good guy. Uh, Paul is sticking it to the shorts. I don't know anything about Paul, but we can look. Uh, hey, Candy Morton, Merry Christmas, Cooper. Has Ham ever mentioned a price target, Cooper's human, for GDC? Well, I bought a little bit. I'm telling you, un, petit, un pico, un petito, ne minoga. Uh, I don't know. I Very little. Uh, about the same that Ham bought, and I, but I don't think Ham told you how much he bought. But... I bought a, a, around a thousand shares at 309, which is probably more than more shares than I need, but fewer okay. shares, fewer, fewer shares than I won't. No, the other way around. More shares. Okay. Cannot take that. All right. Um, anyway, let's just call it a thousand for a simple arithmetic. It's some odd lot above that. Um, so I told him, Cooper's human, that I was going to put in a GTC at 44, and that didn't really excite him. So he said, well, the other stock, whatever that other stock is that we were following, he said, well, that went to 250. So I changed my order. And I know the shorts will make it so I can't hit it. But I put my order closer to 200 just for the heck of it. Well, you can always change your orders. But he didn't really have a price target that he gave me. But his, I can tell he thinks it could really run. It could be a squeeze. I looked at the chart, and uh, I got to do a memory thing here. I think it was as high as 44 or so in the last spike. But if you go back two or three years, 
I, by my memory, it went either to 220 or $250. So if they're really able to get it to run, I also think, uh, again, by memory, looking at the charts, I think somewhere around five or 550, if it breaks through there, there's no resistance that I really see. Um, wow, COS, hey, Steve, COSM is running a bit. GTI eyes up. Um, I think there's a rumor that the Toronto Blue Jays is, are going to are going to acquire GTII. Bill, I didn't see that uh, response. We can look for it. I'm as I'm reading that. I'm trying to think where I could find it. Um, they won't show a share count because the whole system would collapse. All you need is people at home. I, I personally don't understand why the vast majority of America doesn't realize that um, we, the United States of America and NATO have shown total ineffectiveness and it's caused and and because of decisions i believe by victoria newland that's a woman in power i think victoria newland is the most powerful person in the united states right now at least from a foreign policy and military strength side she's a woman but man is she a neocon man uh, but i think because Without, I don't want to get into politics. I'm trying to say that if you keep listening to the mainstream media, if you keep listening to the drivel that we're number one, you USA, we're number one. And if you st still think that what you're hearing about the war in the Ukraine, you know, with the multi billionaire Zelensky who was installed. But anyway, four or 500,000 people killed, soldiers and people killed. But the bottom line is Russia's stronger. And I'm, I personally, I think we should have been friends with Russia. We're, Americans as a people are a lot closer to Russians as a people than you know. And there was no reason other than a petulant, uh, uh, loser of an election couldn't take responsibility on herself. She had to blame it on Putin, and so now we have we're on the we're we're at war that we can't win. But anyway, I, I brought in politics. I know, but I don't mean it to be political. I mean it to tell you that the United States of America no longer appears to be strong to great swaths of the world. I was listening to uh, either Colonel Messenger, is, is he a colonel? Anyway, it doesn't matter. I was listening to an expert. And in the UN, they had a resolution to basically cease fire in, in Israel, in, in Gaza Strip. 5% of the world's population voted no. 5% of the world's population voted against the ceasefire, against the ongoing, I don't want to, I'll, I'll inflame people, but a lot of people, a lot of human beings are being killed in Gaza Strip. And the world voted against this going on. 5% of the world's population voted for it. Four points of that 5% or 4% of the world's population, a little over, the new the United States of America. So regardless of what you think of anything, 
the United States stands for what's going on in Gaza Strip and fully supports Israel's right wingers. And I'm not making any statement at all. I'm not trying to. I'm trying to point out that 95% of the world is against us. 95% of the world's population is against it. I, I just don't know how long the United States retains its... My dad used to always say, we're the world's indispensable nation. That's something that Madeline Not So Bright used to say. But I don't know how long we maintain that status. So my point, it's going to hurt you in your finances. That's all my point is. It's going to hurt you in your finances. And uh, uh, I don't think our financial markets can stand the shock, Bill, of investors realizing that in every stock, every stock position, in the bond positions, in the precious metals markets, in the oil markets, every market they touch, these testosterone-filled traders with their computers and algorithms make everything a financial football, a financial ping pong ball a financial uh uh i don't know what else because it's they control it they control the prices and in the case of these stocks it's always down so i don't know we're not in our, our financial markets could not withstand the disclosure that MMTLP has 700 million shares sold that don't exist, putting a lie to the apologist's point of view that, oh, it's just, it's just algorithmic trading. The clients that do it are just good clients. The numbers you see are only the fail to locate, fail to deliver. But you'd never see in those numbers the delivery and the buybacks. It's all horseshit. It's because people just like, just to bring it the way I started my little uh, diatribe here, people don't want to face the cold, hard truth. Our media is bought and paid for, and it's controlled by BlackRock and the rest of these, these big pools of money. You're not seeing real news when you watch CNN, MSNBC, uh, CBS, ABC, uh, whatever other drivel. You're not reading real news when Carlos Fats newspaper, NBC, uh, New York Times. You're not reading real news in Laura Sanchez's husband's news, newspaper, the Washington Post. You're reading this new experiment in highly educated uh, uh, thought control by a certain kind of people that have been promoted beyond their means or their brain. They didn't start with any brain power. Hey, Greg Menard. Oh, I love that. I love your uh, picture. I love your picture. What's going on with GTII? Something big coming? Um, well, I think this new this deal maker that was hired, uh, I forget his name, Reza Rahani or something, um, Rahiri, Dahari. Uh, anyway, uh, he's a derivatives guy. I have a concern that he might be there to help the shorts, and he might have bamboozled uh, Reichman. But I think Reichman is a, a honest man. He's intelligent, and he has shown that he looks out for shareholders. So probably this is a straight-up guy, but he's a deal maker. So why do you bring him on? Clean. It says in the press release they want to clean up some of these outstanding deals. 
status of some of the outstanding deals. So what I what I think could be coming, and maybe uh, Reichman needed help with it, is uh, the Trento mining deal. It's the only deal out there. Well, the water deal. The water deal's out there. But the only deal that's out there that I know of that is still pending or still whatever the wording they used is the Trento mine deal. So that's my hope. We'll find out. We'll find out. But the the stock is acting like, as you put it, is something big company. I don't know if the stock's acting like that, but the stock is acting like, wow, it's up four cents now. It's acting like somebody knows something, isn't it? Uh, mad gun. And like I say, I think uh, uh, one of these stocks is flying to Toronto to sign a big contract. When I say that, it has nothing to do with Toronto. That's what happened to O'Shea Otani. Um, but it's trying to connect. That was a big deal. That was a $700 million contract. And it didn't turn out to be Chicago. I mean, uh, Toronto it turned out to be the LA Dodgers. But I can't, I can't say more than that. Political stock corruption, border crisis, escalation. Well, I think that's right. Ocean sailing. I think um, that's actually. Uh, as usual, a pretty perceptive point. Um, I I don't know why we still remain faithful to um, uh, people in charge right now. Uh, what's going on is projection. And... Um, uh, there's a lot of ac accusations that one party, one subset, guys that look like me. Um, but I can tell you from my experience, white straight men, <laughs> there's, there's many classes of white straight men. And we're not all, uh, we're not all Rockefeller. We're not all... Uh, Hunter Biden, we're not all uh, John Elway, um, we're not all Mick Jagger. Um, but I, I do understand that there has been unfairness. I want to, I want to, well, maybe I don't, maybe that's too political, but we are trusting ocean sailing People are trusting what they hear in the news, and they believe it. Um, I, I personally think that the majority are going to prevail here. That means the Democrats, I've already said I, how I think Hillary Clinton would be president again. I think guys like me are going to have to be careful uh, saying anything because um, we can end up isolated. But for now, I think free speech still exists. But I'm trying to be careful. But as that layer of people take charge of the press, the military. They already have our educational system. They already have our press, uh, if there is a press. I just think, have you, if you've read George Orwell, um, and, and you know what fascism is and Nazism is, uh, it's the marrying of government to business to media. And just ask yourself which party is doing that. I'll leave it open. I'm sure it's Donald Trump doing it. I'm sure he is. But um, anyway, ocean sailing. 
if as we progress down this dead end road that we can have war with the world's most sophisticated army and largest country i think the that russia is going to have its american century but we can then simultaneously take on the middle east i'm hopeful that we can pull back from the idiocy of victoria newland and her husband um, robert kagan neocons and these simps uh uh the secretary of defense and the secretary of state blinken just we need a a man or a woman a statesman but anyway i'm hopeful we can still maintain some relevance in the middle east i sat years ago i sat at the top of the i, I forget what the name of that um hotel is the one that looks like a sail in Dubai. And my friend who knows everybody, he's a great guy, um, great sense of humor. Um, he and his and his wife is terrific. He's just a great, great family. Um, he He invited me to this outdoor deck way up the wind was blowing and i i was talking to not the prime minister but the foreign minister or way the heck up in of jordan and a, and a few people i'm the only american they started asking me some questions and so i asked some questions back and the thing i remember this is this is during the george w bush days Talk about a talk about a completely underqualified man to be president. Um, but I asked him uh, about the the influence of the United States in the Middle East, and the thing that just I I still remember it. This one really nice person. I think they had a cigarette, but they had a drink. Just elegant guy. He said, we don't listen to the United States anymore. It doesn't really matter. And that was years ago. And I was like, wow, that's a sea change. So ocean sailing, that's what I'm trying to say. I don't, I do care about the politics, but that's not my point. My point is these people with their blindness and their equality of outcome and and this mo new modern monetary theory where you can just print money um we're we're going to a place where the united states is uh influence in the world is going to be reduced it'll always be big but I think it's going to be reduced and it could threaten our, our, I think it will threaten us. That's what I'm warning. I, I think what we do in our own country is going to threaten your financial life. But I also think pressures from outside is going to uh, threaten your financial life. And that's why I, I agree with the ocean sailing. Some of these stocks, if the rest of the world stops, you know, praying hosanna to our financial acumen and our markets, you could see a collapse in our markets. And the flip side of that is these short positions will be squeezed. And so in that case, uh, I'm going to try as I go into the new year, I forget which jerk yesterday came on and said I was uh, working with the shorts and getting paid by all these companies. I will tell you next year I've got to get paid from somebody. Otherwise, I got to I got to go do something else. Um, so I'm going to try to seek out some of these companies I like and see what they'll do. And I'll let you know after I find out how to do it. But one thing I want to start doing, and I'm not paid for it, I really want to start getting you all looking at 
uh, silver. Gold's important, platinum's important, but the other than oil and and I think natural gas, the most mispriced asset in the world is silver. And uh, I'd like to anyway. We'll get there. We'll get there. Sorry to ramble on. Ramble on. Cheers, Diego. Uh, hey, DA. Hola, Romero. Uh, I don't think they're going to be able to sell or box GTII. I, I don't want to lie to you that when a stock is down to, you know, essentially 44 cents, um, you know, if they can get it down by half, it's 22 cents. And then that gets in a frightening way. But the reason, Tom, they won't, in my judgment, be able to seller box it, there's no note out there because Reichman bought it back from Kurt and Seth Kramer. Um, Reichman has never done a deal to like popcorn or the rest or like uh, COSM. Um, I'm trying to remember the other guy, Charlie Mayo. There's a, you know, Charlie Mayo called in and Reichman said no. Reichman has said no probably a dozen or more times to the criminals calling in to give him money if he issues shares. So I don't see seller boxing in the future for GTII or in the near future. I mean, anything's possible over if they make a series of blunders. Um, anything's possible, but they're not going to take a no. MMAT, the board didn't listen to warnings and they took a note, or they're about to. MULN didn't listen to him, took a note. Um, uh, COSM, I think completely misled you and me, and then did a deal with the shorts. Uh, CRTD, that guy can't get it into his head that the person he spent so much time with and so is so nice is a front for criminals at the best or is a criminal himself at Lynn Partners. Um, and he took, he, he did financing both with Lynn Partners and with uh, Power Up Lending. And I'm not sure those deals are undone. But I stand to be corrected. Uh, I know they hired Wes Christian at one point. But anyway, I don't think GTII is going to be seller boxed in any near term future. Um, I think Reitman um, is, owns, owns, you know, he owns quite a bit. I think he protects what is his. And he bought the note back. I don't think he did it. Um, you know, I, did, I wasn't in the stock at that time. I don't think he did it because someone twisted his arm. He, I think he saw the peril. So I think he's a smart guy. I don't think GTII's, I don't see that problem there. Hey, La Liga. TOD? Um, time of day. Wow. Good for you. 40,000 GTII. I'm going to have to call you Sir T. Nye the Science Fly. Finger, big data update. Yeah, I didn't read it all. I, but I, read, I scanned it. Um, it's what I've been saying, Mexican. Uh, we can read it now, but let me get to the bottom. I'll remember to come read it so we can go through it. I didn't print it out. But bottom line, it, it, it's exactly one of the uh, engines of Finger's future is that they are very close to monetizing Sapientus, which is their, I don't know, I don't know why that name was chosen, but it means something. Let me look what it means. 
I looked it up before. Uh, we are the analytic innovation development arm of finger motion, but there's a meaning for it. Anyway. Um, Anyway, it doesn't matter, but it's a it's kind of a, a cumbersome name. But what they're what they're doing is they are in the stage now. They had set up a laboratory. They were doing the science. Hired a bunch of people. That's Pacific Re and Munich Re, Pacific Life and Munich Re, and uh, um, after months. They're in stage two, I think it's called. It's in the, we'll read the press release. But they're going to get to monetizing what they've learned. And it's just huge. It's just huge for Finger. But the, the shorts are trying to tell you it's bad news. Uh, hey, Merry Christmas. Uh, West Virginia, I think, um, I mean, to my very amateur eye, I think, GTI showing a nice uh, sort of snapback strength. Uh, it got as low as, um, what, 39.01 uh, in the last couple of days. So we're not completely out of the woods. But maybe that 39.01 was capitulation. Maybe that's all we see of the downside, and that would be great. Look, if um, if the Blue Jays offer Shohei Otani eight hundred million tomorrow in Toronto, I'm I'm trying to be anyway. I, I'm not going to say anymore. Hey Barbara. Hey Todd. Uh, any more possible MMTLP rumors? I've heard more rumors. Um, and I've, I've had some inkling of some real facts. But my interpretation is... I think I think it's going to be. I get some pushback on this, by the way, when I talk to people. Um, more than one has said they think something could happen in Q1 or Q2 of next year. But I really just don't see any pressure once we're in 2024. It's going to be written off against 2024's earnings. What's the pressure to get it done in the first or second quarter? So to me, I think you have to be willing to anticipate something takes all of next year. Uh, having said that, I believe the parameters of the issue have been made fully clear to lawyers on both sides. I think that the public face that Wall Street is giving to people uh, is somewhat, uh, well, I just think it's a front. They don't want to let you know. Um, but I, I, I think there's movement toward solving this problem, not for you, not for you, but for the big banks the, the big hedge funds, the prime brokers, because the problem could knock one or two of them out of the gate. I don't think the Treasury can afford to bail one out when it happens. So I think that, anyway, I think there's progress. The hard work is working. The knowledge everyone has is working. But the four or five big guys in there are moving it forward. So it can, like anything, um, 
was it Fitzgerald? I don't know that or Hemingway Fitzgerald, I guess. How did you go bankrupt? Slowly at first, then all at once. The progress can seem very slow, but then it can rapidly come together in a deal. And I think the, the trigger point will be when enough people let their politicians and the regulators know that they know that 700 million, give or take, uh, shares of Torchlight, MMT, MMAT, MMTLP, whatever, it results in six, seven, eight hundred million shorts of MMTLP. You know, shares that just don't exist. And they're telling us we're crazy. They're crazy. And that's that's just the theme running into through everything I've said today. Um, if you listen to the lies and the bureaucratic blurbs and the assurances, you're not listening to what's really going on. But that has the weight right now. But I don't know that stupid story of the, the boy who said the emperor has no clothes. How long was it year? I, I don't have kids, but was it years that that emperor was getting the finest clothes tailored from the various tailors. And then the the one came in with the finest and the emperor loved it. I don't know how long it took, but all it took to pop it was the simple observation of the truth by one boy. When that When is that moment going to come? And maybe it comes very quickly, but... Z Warner, I would not expect a settlement this year. I wouldn't expect it in the first quarter. Personally, I wouldn't expect it until the end of next year at the soonest. They're going to drag it out as long as they can. Um, I don't think that's how you should be looking at this situation. I think you should be moving your shares over to next bridge. Oh, yeah. You're saved. You're saved by the bell. Hello? Uh, do you want to go on? All right. Um, the voice is here, audience. Audience, this is the voice. Yeah, how are you doing? I'm sorry I'm in New York and I'm leaving now. I'm going back to Brooklyn. Uh, a couple of people have asked me, again, to stop the buy and sell, make your own determinations. Uh, for example, I'm going to talk about finger motion. <laughs> I've outlined finger motion for the men in black. Thanks to Kappa Barra with partners, it was an easy thing to do because I showed it to them in real time. But the company put out some news today, and I think that everyone needs to do a little homework about stocks that you, you invest in. The company is in the data business, and their partners are Munich Re, Pacific Life. I'm sure there's other plays that I don't know about, but these are the biggest plays in the world that want the information on the Chinese consumer. It's the biggest market in the world. They will eventually monetize this as to be a monster, a monster revenue play. I believe it's like Snowflake, S-N-O-W which has the same type of data. Only we get it from cell phones in China. I don't know how much Snowflake gets it, and I don't know everything about that. But do your homework on the company, and if you can see the potential that I see, I'm not concerned about the daily manipulation. If you have, if you have funds, you can actually add to your position as they try to manipulate it, which I have a friend that's doing that. He bought 300,000 shares. He bought 70 yesterday. I don't know what he's doing today. All right, but this is someone that understands the company and is going to pick the bottom. And he doesn't care about the up and down 10, 20 cents anymore. All right. We, even though he missed the, the, the slaughter like we've seen, he's sensing in here now because he knows that they're running out of room. 
It's, it's basically it's basically forty four cents. Let me look. It's up. It's forty three eight. Bid forty two oh one. Ask forty five forty five sixty nine. Twenty five hundred by twenty five hundred. Three hundred and fifty one thousand volume. It's up twenty eight so cents. Feel that two feel, cents. If you read the news, read the news. Stop. Listen, think the most you can tell the news about their dad and what they're doing and how uh, what the potential is of this big dad, which they've been working on for two years. This is two weeks ago. Two years. They go from nothing to where they're going to be the biggest data provider in China to the world. Everybody wants to know what the consumer is spending on. And the funny thing about the data, when I heard about it, I wanted to go to the company and buy data from them. I wanted to buy the data to see how many people, how many people buy Starbucks coffee. Because they know more about Starbucks. The only people that know more about Starbucks is Starbucks. Because we can tell on a daily basis how much money is spent in Starbucks. Starbucks would shit their pants if we knew. Exactly, if they sold you know two million dollars worth of coffee today, we can tell by we can tell by what cups they buy. How do we know? Because they charge everything on their cell phones. How about Apple Computer? I wanted to get the data and sell it to hedge funds in the U.S. So they can buy and short stops accordingly to that data. That's the that's the vision that I have for the data. But the company selling data to the insurance companies, which are bigger players. They're thinking about growing a real business. And I'm thinking about short, short term, fast money. So then there's every head fund in the world, and Apple's not selling phones or anything. Are you there? The sales are going to be weak, and the stocks are going to go down. And that's what the that I wanted to do. I wanted to create a business out of that. You're kind of fading. Are you driving under a bridge? It may not be valuable today, but it's going to be valuable in a year. 
but it soon will be. And Lynn partners with Betty and not even thinking about what this company does. We give a rat's ass and just the company. That's what they can sure do. They made a mistake here and now they're trapped. That's the same activity that happened in ATP. You can go back and look at it. I see the same thing going to happen here. When it goes, it won't stop. If you go back and look at that, once it started, it never stopped. Yes, the question is one gentleman bought 40,000 shares of GTII this morning. He's up to 400,000 GTII. Um, well, you have to, you make your decision. I'm a buy when people are not paying attention to it. I never chase a stock. For example, GDC, which I own, it started going yesterday morning when I was speaking to you, William. I had no intentions of adding when it's running. I only, if it pulls back, I would buy it. I don't have the funds to buy anymore, but that's when I would buy that's it. That's when I, I bought mine it. was when it was running. <laughs> I only I bought a little bit. The I, I, I never, I rather, I rather miss the trade than chase it. That's just how and, I feel. That's yeah, the way I was doing. Some people chase it. They like to buy I it. I always overpay. I always overpay. Anyway, and go I, on. I, go on. I, I miss a lot of trades because I stand like a statue because I say to my, I stick to what I was taught to do and I say to that, I can change it. I could do it. You know, I'm the type of guy that goes up 30, 40 cents. I'm sitting there bidding five. I'm not paying 540. I just don't do it. What I would do is I would buy 20% of it. I would buy 100% of it. That's a different story. Right. But that's just the way I'm So what do you think this gentleman is buying GDC? What is, he's wondering, or it might be a different guy. What's the target if it runs? My friend bought 600,000 shares. William knows who he is. He's super smart. He, doesn't he is anything. smart. And where he's smart is financially. He's got a brain for finance. So I'm just saying, so I'm following somebody that whatever he's being told, I don't know following him right so it sucks that i can sit there and watch it but you know what i believe i'll be rewarded because this guy put up at four bucks two and a half million dollars and you know, put up pennies compared to it. so it's tough for me to say he said he's going to sell his stock north of eight do you know the market cap of snowflake snow the data it's company. Be, it's that you, gonna be twenty billion dollars. Nope. You want to guess again? Forty billion. It's very close to the gross amount you lost on your bet. It's, it's fifty million. Sixty-five, sixty-five billion dollars. Sixty-five. And people are looking at finger motion. They don't even look at this. Beauty green. Beauty green. Is the biggest reinsurance company in the world. They're huge. Pacific Life Free. You see the commercials on TV with the big whale. That's Pacific Life Free. They always cut the, those press releases on the tape. Do a Google search. Pacific Life Free and Muni Green. They're working together to figure out a, a model of pricing of that. Know how fast you drive, what you drink, what you eat, whether you smoke cigarettes. And, you know, they can tell by your phone. They can tell whether your phone is moving, whether you're sleeping. How, they can tell if you're an Uber driver. That's what these guys can do. So I look at Snowflake. Finger motion is worth nothing. Think about it. It's worth $20 billion, where the price would be. That's not even saying $50, $60 billion. Um, and if you go back in the, a long time ago, the CEO of Finger Motion said he considered the company to be just like Snowflake. He said that in the video. That's why. Um, let me see. No, no glaring questions here, but uh, people are wondering: Is the strength in GTII mean something? 
today. And yes, it means something. They put a press release say, hi, the guy that's doing deals. That the guy is brought in to do deals. That means the deal is happening to me. That's what it means. I said it yesterday, and I'll say it again. Today. Well, I, what I said is maybe because if you, it's in the press release, they're going to try to clean up or work on outstanding transactions or closed transactions. Maybe Reichman just needed help closing a deal. And there's only two I can think of that are out there. There's the water deal, the Toronto mine deal, and maybe an AI deal. Um, and maybe, I don't know if that education deal is still out there. But anyway, maybe he's just there to help on one of those. I don't know. I don't know. Um, you got to look at what he's doing. He's here for a reason. If the stock was $6, it's a different story. It, it, the risk is very little compared to where it was. Um, I pulled over so I could see. I can't. I can't drink and drive, so I'm pulled over. Um, <laughs> I'm looking for. I'm looking. Just remember. Re Let me go to the bottom. Let me go to the bottom. All the back is always yell. The fundamentals, you're full of shit. Bop, 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 all that nonsense. The fundamental news is right in your face. And that's only a piece of what their fundamentals are. It's right on the tape today. <laughs> big data. Go read up a bit. Big data. Snowflake, $60 billion. Not legal advice thinks I'm a snowflake. <laughs> um, you are a snowflake. <laughs> I'm feeling I need to be in my safe place. Um, I have to tell you today, it's beautiful out. The streets are packed in Manhattan, so it's not easy getting around. Are there de Christmas decorations? I don't know. I was just worried about running people over. They're all over the place. Everybody's running around with luggage. Um, I, had to go past 10, I had to go past Penn Station by Madison Square Garden. It was insane. There used to be a great train station there. Um, 0 0.0462 up, last trade 0 0.4562. 40. I don't know what those numbers mean. GPII, <laughs> last trade 44 cents. Up. Oh, well, yeah. you have to look at it when you see 4465. Say to yourself, if I gave you 45 cents, how do I get the change from that number? What is the change from that number? What is that number? Broad. That's all it is. There you go. Fraud. 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 At individual, you cannot get you can't make those sales at those numbers because you you don't give you don't know how to give change for that number. Hey, you're you got a special message here. Um Celeste, if you remember um five year old Celeste, she just wished you happy Christmas, happy new year. And she wanted to join in and listen to the well, voice. Thank you, Celeste. But you forgot to say happy birthday. That's his birthday is that day. One of those days day. is the hamster's birthday. One of those days. That's what you have to look at is that day. And and I'll tell you more about it. He doesn't get double gifts. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I always looked at it this way. I've been doing this 24 years and I haven't stopped. So I figured that I was, I was somehow told to do this for a reason. And that's, you know, <laughs> I feel like I'm doing it for a reason. That's why. Well, I was talking to somebody who was it? It was somebody here or somebody, you know, I forget who, but um, I do think you, cause you were the, the, the beginning of this, but I think it's the truth. You're you're fighting. The truth is on your side, and I think the help of all these people in this chat and others. Anyway, I think you are doing the right. Well, thing. I spoke with Busy today, and he said to me, "How do you do this every day? It just wears on you." Oh, That's it does. Said. It does. And I said to him. The only reason I keep going is because of people like everyone that's helping out, and I can't name everybody, you know. 
including busy. I'm not going to throw Richard. It's not legal advice. And I'm not giving him any props with those bad jokes, but people like that, everyone, you know, I, I, I spoke with Todd today. You remember Todd, he was down in DC with us. You know, he's a, he's a pilot. And Oh, it's guy. Todd. I thought it was Kevin. Todd is his name. Great guy. Yeah. He's yeah. on here. I'm just saying, you can say hi people, to him. He's on here. He's on there. He's, I spoke with him before. He's a great guy, you know, and he, he's a, he's a pilot. And he's learned naked short selling because he guess he has a family too. He doesn't want to get them robbed. And he, I spoke with him and he and he says, I don't know as much as you do. And I said, You do know as much as I do. I don't have the gory details of the the deals with the prime brokers and the brokers. I I wasn't a naked short seller. I don't understand the criminal mind behind the scene. I don't have the I have a friend that was a naked short seller. And I just don't want to go see him because I know he's a very bad guy. And I'm not going to ask him for the gory details because he knows if I get it, I'm going to give it to the authorities. So I try to, I don't do that. So I could go get all the gory details. All right. I could tie him up a bead with a bat and I can get it from him. But I don't have all the gory details. Some of the details you see from Susan Trimbath, I'm learning it as we go along. I don't, I, you know, my bank is TD Bank. I don't have a bank of Switzerland, the bank of the Cayman Islands. I can't move money around the universe like these guys do. I can't, I don't have a prime broker. I don't have any of that stuff. So the deals and the people behind the scenes need to be exposed. All right. And that's where you go after the brokers, the back office people, because they will give up the criminals that are compensating them, buying them off to look the other way. All right. That's, the only thing I understand about Wall Street is that there's many people that are overseeing this stuff. And if they're looking the other way, that means they're being paid off. They're not doing it for fun. Oh, yeah. Everyone's paid off, including That's that what? that woman that runs NASDAQ, Adiana Freeman, Friedman. She makes $28 million a year. Do you think she gets that because she's doing a good job? Look, it's called look the other way. And that's and that's what happens. Um, let's see. Celeste has a joke for everybody. How much does it cost for a pilot to get his ears pierced? No, a pirate. A pirate. Uh, a pirate to get his ears pierced. It's only a buccaneer. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Richie, wake up. Get a lesson here. <laughs> Shiver me timbers. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one from Celeste. Yeah. Not legal advice says arg. That's a good <laughs> joke. But um, again, people on your stocks that you own, GTII, it started with the debenture. We trapped the shorts. We trapped their prime brokers, the Kramers. It led to Alpine. It led to other things. We exposed it all. We need a regulator or enforcement to finish the job. The regulators are looking the other way. They take they take their marching orders from Hindenburg. We gave the SEC $27 trillion in crimes. $27 trillion in fraud. And Hindenburg called them up about TIO and caught a bunch of criminals in a, in a company making false statements from... The company's from Nigeria or something like that. And that I don't I never followed it, but I looked at the story. I'm saying, you know, good luck if you invested in that company. All this right. gentleman so, just pointed out, and I just found it. It's I don't know if I can go into Bloomberg, but I can read the headline. South Korea finds three global hedge funds right. for law violations. Really? Yeah, I can only read the first sentence. South Korea has been... uh, Christian put it up early this morning. I saw it. Okay. Listen, the, you the the South Korea caught three guys in three days. The SEC found how mint shabby savvy management. That was it. <laughs> Think about that. All these companies destroyed, and they only found that fat bastard savvy management. Excuse me, Celeste. Well, he is. A bastard. I don't know about the rest right. of it. So let's put your, put your earmuffs on. <laughs> you hear that? 
No, that's, but, uh, yeah, that's right. That's, a, it's almost a bad word. It's more about. But anyway, it's just that, that's who the SEC found. Savvy management, I think, fell asleep in front of the SEC drunk with a note on him. He's a naked short seller. That's the only way it found him. Um, do you ha I'll just ask it one more time because it keeps coming up. How high do you think GDC will go? I think it's going to go very high. I just don't know the second, and I'm following somebody else. And I again, I don't know how big the short is. It's obvious the stock went to 360 and they attacked it straight down. The stock went to 552 week three weeks ago and they beat it down. And that's when my friend purchased it, and that's when I purchased it on the dip. I bought it on the rip. <laughs> you went the opposite way. <laughs> Not a very big that's purchase. It's a big buck. <laughs> Not a very big purchase, but I I told people when you're trading stocks, if you want to get into a name you know nothing about. Like, I love Wolf. I met the people at Wolf. I listened to their presentation. These guys are tremendous. They were behind M-A-R-A, R-I-O-T. So these guys know the space. And, you know, I purchased it a long time ago at 60 or 70 cents. And it ran to four bucks. It got killed back down to a dollar. And I just follow it versus Bitcoin pricing. And I know that they use nuclear power to make it. But and now the stock is 220. I know if I pay two twenty for it, it's going back to a dollar. So I'm like terrified to even chase it. But I know it's going higher. I just don't know how to enter the position if I was going to do it. I well, did, I, I studied it. I worked at a firm where the sort of boss, but really the head of the firm, would ta taught me. I was very young. Um, she was the first person that owned a seat, a woman that owned the seat on the. Uh, New York Stock Exchange. But she said if a stock's up, just buy a quarter position, just buy a half position. Uh, well, that's what I normally do. But since I paid 60 cents for it before, 70 cents, I find it hard to chase it at $2.20. I've been watching it, talking Sounds about like it. Sounds like you're a cheap B-A-S-T-A-R-B. Wall Street's about pennies. It's about pennies. It's not about hitting home runs every day. There's stocks that you trade and there's stocks that you hit home runs with. I believe GTII and Finger Motion are going to get us those paydays. And I'm going and I went to law enforcement to try to make it happen faster for all of us. You right. have a lot of happy I, birthdays. I talked to a lot of people. All right. When I reached out to investors and said, get me to the Secret Service, a, a gentleman did. And, you know, he got me right to the top. And I can't thank him enough. And I want to be paying one day because he, he went out of his way and did that. And you know what? Another gentleman got me to the FBI, went out of his way. They called me up. Think about you getting the phone call when it says the FBI on your phone. Do you, how do you think you're happy about that? You know, it's not easy to take these calls. You know, I told him point blank. I said, put me away. It'd be easier than what I do. If you can't find the criminals, I don't know what to say anymore. They're, they're all over the place. I Forget would think about Ephraim, Ephraim <laughs> Zimbalist Jr. Forget about getting the guys selling fake bags on uh, in Chinatown, whatever the guys were it is downtown. They're selling all the fake bags and all that garbage. You know, who cares about that? They're selling bags that everybody knows. If they're selling you a Gucci bag or whatever, a Fendi bag or whatever the other bag is, that was really expensive ones on a corner and they're 20 bucks. You're buying a fake bag. If anyone buys those things and they don't, they think they're real, then I want to sell them a bridge. I'll sell them a part of the Brooklyn bridge. <laughs> what are you crazy? Just sell but it more than once. Market, but in the stock market, we're buying stock that we believe is real. And we all are buying counterfeit shares. That's very different. And we have a regulator that's supposed to pay attention to this, and they're doing nothing. So instead of waiting for the regulator, we gave them a shot, William. We put the truck up there how many times? Um, this lot. guy is saying we were hard on uh, the, the CEO with three first names. I always forget uh, Jeremy, John, Hamilton or something. 
I thought you and him were hard on GNS yesterday. He went public, told value eleven dollars to nineteen, gets shorted to pennies, joins CEO block, tries upstream, does a dividend, hires less. He, did, he and, did one thing wrong. He had all these benches in his camp. And he quietly paid them off. He had one that he settled with last year. Go back and look. He settled with a hedge fund last year. And he basically let him off the hook. He said he called them criminals. They said, we're not criminals. That tells me that he had some sort of dealing with them. And he let them loose. Then he did it again. He paid off $18 million in debt. And he let them convert. So this guy's had convertible debentures all over him the whole time. That's what I, everything else he's doing is correct, but he should have said, Hey, I got $20 million in convertible debt that eventually I'm going to have to convert because I can't pay him back because I don't have the money. He did it. And his stock went from nine down because the debenture guys were naked shorting it versus the debenture. But, uh, there you go. Other than that, he's a great guy. And the, um... I'm, not going, I'm not going hard on him. I'm just telling you the facts. Yeah, the shares outstanding are seventy four million. You want to buy the stock? Knock yourself out. He's right to go buy the stock. I just gave you the opinion. He put it on the tape. He paid off eighteen million dollars, and he said some of the notes were converted. Where were they converted at? Thirty cents, twenty cents? You tell me. Well, they that's the crux. Of, that's the crux of the question. He thinks the idea was to get rid of the toxic debt. But then he says what he did wrong. The problem is when you take the toxic debt out, when you get rid of it, look at HPIL or VNUE. They settled their toxic debt and they don't even trade anymore. Right. Anyway, PS71, the problem is letting the criminal cover their... Uh, he let them off their hook. He let them off the hook. He had them dead. He needed to do something to expose them. He should have hired Mark Bazile to go after the toxic debt to get it removed as a as a uh, unregistered security offering, right? They're unregistered dealers, excuse me. He would have had it thrown out. And this way they would have had a choke on the $18 million. But he didn't do that. Don't get me wrong, I don't know every gory detail, but the press release said. He converted the, he made it sound like it was a marvelous thing. Well, if it's marvelous, good luck. I don't, that's up to you. I, I, I don't own it. I he listed everything he did before was great. He still, he still talks it up, but the, the benches and the, 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 the convertible debentures is, you know, we know, we all know the crime stems from that. Yeah. So just to summarize it, I think when you, when, it depends on how you get rid of the debt. But getting rid of the debt per se is not the solution. I think GTII, they got rid of the debt, but they did it early. And then they never did a deal with the shorts. The, my understanding is the criminals sold 40 or 50 or 60 million shares against that convertible note. Reichman paid the dues, the fees, bought it out. And they were still sitting there with whatever, 50 million, give or take. Listen, all you have to know is that Charlie Mayo called the company up, left the voicemail. If you need me to put it back up there, I can. Just, you know, just you, you can search it. Charlie Mayo's phone call. Hey, Reiki, we want to do a deal. We want to give you money. Right. All of a sudden, they love the company. They want to give the money. That was at a dollar fifty, And the company didn't take any money. Instead, the stock got squeezed to nine. And what happened? Alpine jumped in and shorted it back down. They got caught naked shorting with no money. Do you How do you stop criminals? We can't stop them. We can see what they're doing, but we can't stop it. Do you happen to have your vivid memory on for how many shares? What was the float in Volkswagen when it closed? Closed? No, I don't remember. I don't. That's a hard question to answer. Just Google, just Google Volkswagen short squeeze. There's a hundred stories there. People did detailed dives into it. It the Volkswagen squeeze happened because Porsche took a stake in it, 
and they was no they there was no more shares. They bought most of the stock, and they once they announced they had the stake, there was no stock, and they got roasted alive. <laughs> Not legal advice says he can turn you into the FBI if you want to want to be. Yes, please, please. <laughs> Send me to send me to whatever prison they have. They have a softball team or a pickleball team. I could I could keep busy all day. Oh man, he needs to keep his brain busy. Um, a little green, a lot of people. Little green candle wishing you happy birthday. Not legal advice. His birthday is on the 29th. My older brother is December 31st. He's worse than he's worse than anybody. No one ever called. Did him. your parents get together by appointment every year? <laughs> I think my father was out celebrating while my mother was like, giving birth. <laughs> um, this guy wants me to summarize what Ham is saying. Wow. I said this, that, and the other thing. Basically, Wall Street is complete all fraud. It's manipulation up, down, sideways. If you want to play the game, you better be a smart ass trader because they'll take your pants down and you you know what will happen. So that's what goes on. Right? You can sit here and play it. I advise you not to or become an expert in it because you're just going to get whittled apart. You better off going to buy Bitcoin. You can trade it 24 hours a day. You can get in and out. Go figure out a way to play one of those cryptocurrencies because they're better than Wall Street. And that's why Wall Street's attacking it, because they all know it's better and, and safer. They need to shut it down, because money's coming out of Wall Street and going to Bitcoin, which is better. If I had the money, I would have sold out everything, bought Bitcoin at 16000 when I posted it on Twitter. I was told to buy it. And, and look where it is. What the, they said that once the ETF was going to get approved, the thing was going to take off straight up. Instead of sitting here trying to fight security fraud. Um, so people are wondering your thoughts on when MMTLP will settle. I gave my answer, which no one liked. <laughs> but um, I can't believe it's still going on. It will settle. I think that they, it's so bad what's going on behind the scenes. If they do come out, it will be explosive and it'll 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 carry through all the stocks. That, um, it's not that they they can't pay the money in MMTLP. It's the damage that's going to come out from MMTLP. When everybody figures out that these guys have looted the whole system and some idiot sold 600 million shares of a stock that he didn't even own. Now, what do you do? That, show, that A, shows that the system is broken, that there's no one checking. How did these shares get into the system? Who allowed it to get trading? The criminals actually went around and got the stock trading we'll get with, no, with no principles involved. That shows that the government has no clue about what's going on. And they take their marching orders from the criminals. So whoever it was that got MMTLP to trade, I think they said it was virtue. I think I'm not sure who it was. I think I can't remember. Um, and obviously, whoever whoever got it to trade has some juice, um, and they got the thing trading. That's who did it. All right, this guy's going away. This guy is banned. All right. Um, uh, another idiot. Yeah, it's just he wanted me to. Why did they you call? Why did they join your call? And uh, why did they join your call to to sort of break your to break your whatever your chops? They're doing it because we're exposing them. They can't make any money. Do you understand all these pikers, all these guys that are, hang around the naked shorts? That isn't Lynn Partners calling you up. That isn't Charlie Mayo. These are people that they pay that post on the boards. Their job is to try to discourage people and get us to break rank. That's what they're trying to do. And I told you, when your fight is won, everyone just do a little something, retweet something, say something, sign a petition. That's all you have to do. Keep showing these people that we're moving forward. Yeah, and I think you, you and all these people are having an impact. They're worried. This is the one wild card 
that they can't buy off, they can't uh, uh, ignore, and they do this crap. Listen, I was on a conference call three weeks ago, and the final number of people listening or participating was over 5,000 people. So 5,000 people got, they sat on the phone for two hours and listened to all this stuff, and they got a complete education about security fraud. I only hope they got off the phone and they told one person, and now we have now we have 10,000, and it goes to 20,000, and that's how this movement began. And the only way to stop it is to keep educating. All you have to say to people that you know, hey, you invest in the stock market, be careful, move to the sidelines, take your money out. Well, I'm making money. Sure you are, but eventually you're going to get taken. Understand before you play the market, understand what's going on. I can tell you straight out, the Secret Service had no idea about naked short selling. That was 40 days ago. Now they understand the whole thing. That is a fact. The FBI, they know about it because they got burnt owning stocks. MMTLP and Finger they own. And many FBI agents own it now. How's that one? No one ever thought they'd hear that, right? That's right. Now they're all pissed because they're all losing and they want to know more and they want to prosecute now. And they thanked me because they get on these calls. When I announce I'm having a call, they're on it. When I jump on your calls, William, they don't know where I am. Yeah, that's the whole deal. Um, yeah, people are. If anybody, the cars. There's a new Netflix show. It's been it's been around called Car Masters. M A S T E R S. Uh, excellent, excellent TV show. If you're into cars, they repair, make new cars. They turn old cars into good cars. You just, it's something you should watch. It's entertaining. The new season came out last night. I watched three episodes last night. Car Masters, M-A-S-T-E-R-S. I used to listen on the weekend to the those two brothers. Um, I can't remember. The their twins? Names. The crypto twins? No, they would talk about cars and do we cheat them? No, I just, I just watched them. These guys make they take broken down cars and they change them into different type. It's it's very interesting. It's a you know 30, 40 minute episodes and it's good to watch. If you want to watch a great show, watch Jack Reacher. Reacher. That's a good show. Reacher is a new it's a new episode just came out on that. Other than that, what else can I say? The college football is coming to an end. Football is coming to an end. And click we'll and clack. Click and clack. That's it, Nunya. Click and clack. I forget their That's real cool. names, but they, they were no. fun to listen to. But cars, you can't do anything with cars anymore. Everything's plastic and computers. It's Well, these guys, do, they do a lot of old cars. So anyway, any other questions? Um, one guy is asking about the float on Finger. $24 million at the DTC. I was told that. The CEO was at a presentation in Las Vegas, and that's what he said. Um, so 24 million shares. I know a group that owns 20. All right. And maybe he's also asking, how do you break out the 200 million in naked short position? How do we break out? I don't know. I'll read, the, I'll read his question. Ask him to break down 200 million shares on finger to the float. I hope this makes sense. It doesn't make sense, but I'll try. <laughs> if, if the float is 24 million and there's a group of a few people that own 20, that means 4 million shares is left. That's all that could be bought is 4 million. We traded 400,000 today. We trade 400,000 every day, right? That's a, what's that? Out of, of a week, 400,000 is 2 million a week. So you just, and we see the naked short is almost 60% a day. So 4 million a week, it's what's that? Uh, what is that? The, the 16 million a month, 60% of that is fake. So retail people buy a thousand, a thousand, two thousand, five thousand, and it keeps adding up. Get guys buy 50,000, 30,000. 
And before you know it, these numbers just keep going up. No one's selling it. There's all, all we see is 400,000 shares and people are buying it. No, there's very little selling. Yeah. Um, if they stop the music, they okay, could win. No. If we stop the music, there should be only 24 million shares that are spoken for. If we stop the music, and it's 224 million or 230 million. We own 230 million, there's only 24 million. Do you think that's normal? It can only be 24 million. GameStop, the number was enormous. Not in the ratio that we're seeing in Finger Motion or GTII, but it was big. And the difference between GameStop and Finger Motion was that institutions are the ones that drove it to the moon, not retail investors. Don't ever listen to that. That's all nonsense. Institutions made it happen. Finger motion is moving into the institutional name. The more data, more fundamental news that comes out, institutions will start buying it. Once institutions start piling in, I think there's a couple of holders already. Well, once you start seeing institutions start taking positions, then this thing will be fundamentally, it'll just drive it crazy. That's, you know, that's what's happening. So the rate to get the fundamentals is over. The company has the fundamentals now. Now they're just growing the fundamentals. Four years ago, it was just starting with the fundamentals. Now they started with the, uh, the big data and the big data is going to turn into revenue soon. When it turns into revenue, just look at Snowflake. That's what happens. And no one's, and they're competing against no one in China. Finger Motion is the, the big data provider in China. 1.3 billion people, I think it is, William, or 1.5 billion. I forgot the number. It's a lot. The of US people. is 300 million. Who has more data? <laughs> you tell me. Who has more money? Um, Ruby's pointing out GDC's borrow rate is 131%. Listen, don't get too deep in that one. We're following somebody. Yeah, that's just a tiny trade. That's not a... That's a yeah, we're following somebody. I don't need to get into every gory detail about the company. Knowing the symbol and the price is good enough for me. Exactly. And uh, you know, If I hear that my friend is exiting, everyone will know about it. Um, wow. This person, she wants to know who are the institutions. I, I don't know oh, that buy in. It's just the prime brokers. It's in the case. What, of, what do you mean? What is she? What, what was the question? Who are those institutions? Examples of these institutions that buy that in. That are doing what? That, that, are that doing buy in. Stocks? That buy in. The I, buy stocks or? No, I th she doesn't say. I think she's talking about the buy ins that come, but maybe. Well, listen, Fidelity. If Fidelity owns 10 million shares of Finger and the depository trust only has a million shares for Fidelity, that means Fidelity has 9 million counterfeit shares in their system. If the FBI walks in and says, Fidelity, let's see that number that you, you know, Fidelity can hit a button in one second, know how many shares they own of Finger Motion. In one second, they can hit a button. And then they just have to call the depository trust and say, how many physical shares do you have for me? The depository trust says we have 1 million. Fidelity's going to say we own 10. That means 9 million are counterfeit. That is where I'm pointing the FBI at. That's the point. That's where you got to go get them. Because when Fidelity has to show those cards to the FBI, the FBI is going to say to them, how come you didn't fix this or close this out? And they're going to sit there and say, oh, I'm going to hum and a hum and a hum. I didn't know I was supposed to. That's their job is to close out that transaction and make sure when you do a trade, the brokerage firm executes it, make sure as you get the settles it and make sure their, their, their obligation is to get you dividends. What they've done is executed your stock and everything else. They completely did nothing. 
They earned nothing. They've done nothing. Um, one question here from Skinny Whale. What happens if there's several stocks squeezing all at once? Can the market handle it? Can Wall Street handle it? They happen every day. Okay. All over the place. But her point, I guess, would be if you had major, huge squeezes. They're in every name. That's Listen, the, the SPC is turning off the faucet, but it's taking years because that's how big the problem is. The SPC came out, said we want to be make it transparent. The, <laughs> the, the, all the, mark, all the uh, hedge funds, all the big players came out there and said, there's no way we're going to tell you. We, we can't show you what we're doing. That's how crooked the game is. The longs have to show their cards and the shorts don't have to show anything. And there's no, the number I just talked to you about, Fidelity owns 10 million, the DTC has 1 million, there's a discrepancy of nine, that nine is counterfeiting. Where did they come from? Who, did, who sold that 9 million? Transparency would show you who sold that 9 million. Oh, wait a second. It's Stevie Cohen, it's uh, Ken Griffin. They all did a million shares apiece. Now you know where the criminal activity is a direct hit because they're filing that they have to show their cards. The DTC shows there's only 1 million. The broker terms own 10, 9 million are fake, and we got a direct pipe to whoever is short. So she was asking wh which institutions bought the stock to make GameStop run if it weren't. Who what? bought it? it? Who bought it? The guy from, uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy from Bed Bath & Beyond and uh, the guy from, the, it was the dog food guy. What was his name again? R Ryan Cohen. Yeah. yeah. Ryan Cohen came in. Then the guy from The Big Short came in. And other, all the other hedge funds on the street were following them. They brought their friends to the table. And it worked so well in GameStop, where did they go to next? AMC. After AMC, where did they go next? Bad Bath & Beyond. They just kept spreading it. It sounds just like what I want to do, right? Yeah. After we break one stock, what are we going to do? We're going to go to another stock. After that, we're going to another stock. Only I had the balls to tell you what we're going to do. They were doing it quietly as a pack of wolves on the long side, squeezing shorts. Why? Because these guys have billion dollars. I don't have a billion dollars. I can't do it. Do you think the open letter, which I guess it's up to 120 congressional signatures now, do you think that's going to help? Yes. It's an embarrassment. The SEC, these guys belong in jail for stonewalling. I watched some of those videos of the game with Gary Gessler with that guy, Senator Crapo. And uh, it's an embarrassment that they just keep hiding. And there's one senator that was just new to the panel. And he says, I'm new to this panel, but you will answer us. And we will get the answers from you. I mean, look what they have to say to the SEC. Because you're supposed to be working for the people of the U.S. You, you can't even answer a question. Listen, everyone, you can go join the short sellers anytime you like. I told you before, you know what, if they don't fix it, I can join the short sales. I'll buy some puts in the morning. Then I can just go out, get a, a fake website, get some guy from overseas to host it, right? And yeah. put up anything we like. Yeah. What's the stocks go down? If this, if you live, if we were going to pick on Jeffries, the CEO got caught in an FBI thing. He's getting arrested, blah, 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 blah. People will start bailing out of the stock. It's like yelling fire in the theater. Guess what? I'll make myself a quick hundred thousand. People will lose their jobs. People will lose their pension money. Eh, but I made a hundred grand and I go to the next stop. That's what these guys are doing. And we have to watch it every day. That's the sick part. We call it out for you. We watch it. Any given time, Hindenburg and Capabara, Capabara, whatever all these guys are, White Rock, they come out with their reports, that write a report. If, we, if we're right, we're winners. If we're wrong, who cares? 
Call the SEC up. Tell them there's fraud. We call them up. Tell them there's fraud. They don't say anything. We put a truck. We stand outside. They don't say anything. Does anyone think it's strange? Can, can the uh, how state... You invest, how can you invest in a system where I just showed you everybody's looking the other way and couldn't get less if you lost your money and they're protecting criminals? Could the Secret Service deputize you for a couple of weeks? <laughs> I told him, just give me the jacket and the badge. I'll get my friends. We'll take care of it. Um, there's one jerk's comment. I'm not going to read it. Um, but this is a good one. Listen, anybody who comes on you, William. Yeah. Stop not skinny, giving not skinny. To the audience. They're idiots. Yeah. If you want to support security fraud, that's two doors down. Go knock on the door with the crane. We don't want security fraud. What is the big deal? Why are you so angry about us trying to expose security fraud? I don't give a shit if you buy a stock. I could care less. I'm telling you to run away from the stock market because it's all fraud. I do believe there's two stocks that I follow that have the potential to change your life when we break these guys. That's it. It's all fraud. What do you want me to say? I, I don't give a shit about the companies. But yet these guys come on and accuse us of this, that, and the other thing. And I said, come, I'll, I'll introduce you to the FBI. Come tell your story. Come here. I don't care. But yet, William, they come on because they know you're a nice guy. I keep telling you, F O R K them, F O R K, fork them, as they say from the from the good place. So, the last few trades of GTII, somebody's been buying and they've saved 0. 0.0001 on their purchases. The ask is forty five cents, and the trades are going off at forty four ninety nine. <laughs> so if anyone thinks they're not naked shorting anymore, just look at the numbers. Those numbers don't belong. And this goes to a cash register. I like to pay $44.99 for that. Well, it's 45 cents. No, $44.99. Can you give me change of that? What change? What number is that? I don't even know what number that is. They're just flooding the market, counterfeits, and they're so aggressive. They want it. They don't want 45. They want 44.99. It's like free money for them. They just don't want the print them. at 45. All right. They don't want it to print. No momentum. We can't have momentum. We don't want these shareholders to believe that the stock can actually work. Right. So we keep offering it lower. Finger right. motion gets to four. Let's push it back down. We'll make them suffer. Right. That's all they think about. That's what. That's why these guys belong in jail for life, because they're sitting here, they want to torture you and make you suffer. That's what they're doing to all of us. Legal advice is telling you what the change is, because he's not only an attorney. He went to Harvard. He says it's one ten thousandth of a penny. <laughs> so what do they do? They take a penny and they get a, a, a metal cutter and they cut a piece of it out for you. How do they get it? How do I get it back? Shavings of a penny. Right. Um. Listen, Richard, it's not legal advice. Every time the stock moves up, it comes with these waves of selling. Break it below four. Now it goes back up to four. Hurry up, push it back down. Yesterday, the stock was, I was on the phone, William traded 185,000. A friend of mine told me he had a big buy order. They plugged him for 70 something thousand in minutes. Not to let it go. It was the three pennies. They were holding. Um, and of course, hold it down. Don't let it go past four. It gains momentum. All these suckers on the phone are going to buy it if they see that. It makes our job harder. That's all they're doing. But I keep telling you, just accumulate it. The fundamental news, everything's on the tape. Read it yourself. The CEOs put up videos. They're the leader in, I think it's 5G or 6G now, whatever it is. Go read the stuff. It's right there. They have a deal with AIZ. 
assurance. They insure all the cell phones in China. That's a business that just started. It's $100 a year to insure your cell phone in China. AIZ gets $50 of the insurance money. 25 goes to China Mobile, $25 goes to Finger. Do the math. How many cell phones are in China? 1.6 billion. If they just get a tiny portion of that, they get $25 a year for cell phone insurance. And all they are is the broker on the trade. They don't have to repair the phones. AIZ does that. They don't have to sell the phones. They don't have to carry any inventory, nothing. And people don't read the news. It's right there. Watch the videos. It's right there. So in my eyes, I think I found a hidden gem. It, I've been here five years. I paid 287 December 31st, 2018. It's almost 2024. The stock is $3.90. I'm up what? A dollar? Dollar, whatever, a dollar and a quarter, whatever the hell it is, right? Not even up a dollar. In five years, the company's had 10 partnerships, revenues exploding, and I'm up one dollar. That's Freud Street for you. And that's why I'm fighting, because I believe this is completely false. What's going on here? It's a criminal. They got listed on the NASDAQ. Getting listed on the NASDAQ comes with what? Oh, we're just going to rob more from you. Why do, people, why do companies pay lawyers to get listed on the NASDAQ, do everything right to get approved by the NASDAQ? They went through the whole process to get what? Slaughtered from nine straight down. Thank you, NASDAQ, for looking the other way. I'm up $1 in five years on my investment. I could have threw a goddamn dart at the board and done better. But I did my work. I studied it. I thought it was going to be a home run swing, something that could support my family and make a lot of money for. And turn, Instead, it turned into a shit show by Wall Street. And that's where my anger comes from. I'm up $1. The company has deals with AIZ. Munich Re, Pacific Life Re is the leading provider of data. You name it, top up minutes, the SMS text messaging, and someone's in here trying to mark it down every day a penny, a nickel, a penny, a nickel, a penny, a nickel. And that's Lynn Partners because they're trapped and I'm not letting them out. Need any more? Uh, yeah, that, was, roll, that was good. Um... John wants to know, he's asked three times, I think twice anyway. Um, he thinks the criminals have it out for you. So any stock you mention, they press down double, triple, quadruple on. I love GNS. GNS, GNS. <laughs> I love. But the gentleman said I was hard on that guy. GNS. I love GNS. That's my next stock. GNS. I'm I love Amazon. GNS. Amazon. <laughs> Amazon. I love Jeffries. Yeah. Yeah, this is a stock. My friend told me to buy the stock yesterday. Sam, Mary, Charlie, Indian. He said it's going, his technical analysis, it's going to five something. It's down $12, he told me yesterday. Go short that stock. It's three hundred dollars. But instead, they can't make any money shorting these stocks because they can't get a big position. CEI, going back in time, traded a billion shares a day. Imagine selling a billion shares of a stock short. Let's say an average price of three. The stock is worth a penny now after the reverses and everything. A penny. They made $2.99 a billion times, whoever did that trade. That's how these guys are making all their money. They're destroying companies. People are buying it. Retail's buying it by the millions and billions of shares. 
and they steal from everyone. And they walk away and they made a billion dollars destroying the company CEI. M-U-L-N, I don't know how high it was. I never followed it before. But can you imagine how much they stole from that company? Uh, let's say it was $10. I don't know. It's now worth a penny, if it's worth a penny. Northwest Bio had an English guy that funded the company. I think he lost a hundred. Uh, he was a top biotech guy. They slaughtered him. He went out of business. He lost $150 million in Northwest Bio. I remember that from years ago. They destroyed that guy. A, 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 a top biotech guy who did his work. Whoever's like buying GTII is getting a really good price. They keep accumulating at 0.4499. <laughs> There's 9,600 available to sell. The ask is 9,600 at 45 cents, but the buyer doesn't want to go up to 45 cents. <laughs> They're just buying at 44.99. And to to whoever said there's no evidence of fraud, put your eyes. There on. is no evidence. There is no evidence. He's right. Tell, tell him there is none. Thank you very much. Move along. Thank you very much. Yeah. So not no legal evidence. advice showing that he went to Harvard is telling you that in 2020, there were 1.22 billion phones registered in China. 1.2 billion? 1.22 billion, yeah. So who knows what it is now? Let's say it's even let's make it a billion. I go lower. I'm not I don't want to expand it higher. A billion phones. This little company has grown into the biggest player in China. And it's not known to fidelity management yet, or this it's, one or that one, but it'll slowly get there. And I've been here, like I said, uh, five years, and I'm up. A dollar, not even a dollar now. It's it's three ninety to two eighty seven. I'm up what ninety cents, whatever it is. I'm not even up a dollar anymore. Well, you're one hell of an investor. I'm one. I'm the Warren Buffett of losing. I'm just like uh, I'm just like Lynn Partners. Every stock I invest in goes to zero, and yet everyone I gave my money to is up two hundred and twenty percent. No wonder the guy's the richest guy in Australia. He's tied to Lynn Partners and they're robbing every American. So everybody, everybody on this phone call, and I, I don't want to put pressure on anybody. Just even you get off this call, say, hey, is that nice? There's a guy in Australia that's worth two billion dollars. He's having a grand old life. And everybody here is losing their tens and their twenties and a hundred thousand or whatever, a billion dollars, whatever it may be. And we're just giving it to that guy. Thank you, Lynn. We're just giving it to him. Or the Kramers living out in Long Island. The guy put his name, his house, the old Kramer, forget their name, Seth and whatever his name is. I forgot their names. He put his house under his father's name to hide his assets. How do we know that? Because we have someone in Long Island, a real estate person that dug through the records and figured it out. There's shareholders in Long Island that know everything about the Kramers. They go to the Kitchen Witch, whatever that place is. I forgot the place for coffee. They, everyone in the place knows they're criminals. Everyone at their golf club knows they're criminals. They all know the Kramers are uh, criminals. Again, this is something that's been going on a long time. And, you know, shareholders that don't read, read the stuff. Right. Tom Ronk used to get the data. I can't get it from him anymore because he wants to charge us forty thousand dollars for his information. And you know what I say to Tom Ronk? Go fuck yourself. All right. Here's the guy who had a business and I was helping him out, but he doesn't want to help anymore because he wants to earn a minute money. So he doesn't care about us anymore. But he provided data and I stopped getting it. All right. So that there's plenty of people that are hurting because they're not making a living. So Tom provides his service. And he doesn't want to give it to us anymore. So, William, I can't get that information anymore, which was useful. Turns so out he's just, just like a lawyer or a... He's just like everyone else. That's exactly what <laughs> I'm teasing, Richard. But, you know, that's what shrinks and hookers. Put the money on the dresser, dear. That's, that's what they are. <laughs> you know, so again, 
I helped raise the money. These guys all want to get on their, t- their TV and talk and all this bullshit. But when you ask them to help us anymore, I, I can't blame him. He's looking to make money. He's got a family. And he doesn't really care about all of us anymore. So I don't really care about them. And that's how the shorts win because we all break apart. So I tried to hold it all together, trying to get the data. Those that does it for me every day. All right. People help out. We figured a different way to get the data. But we got a good source of where it came from. We got the old sheets from where we got it for free. Wes Christian, he's a lawyer. He's looking for money. He doesn't give a shit about any of us. He's looking down the road for the big, the big payday. That's what they do. I'm here to help break the short, squeeze the stock so you guys can make money and myself. And the conversation. That's what it's about. And the people doing it on the other side of the trade, they made a wrong decision to short the wrong stocks. And they're aggressive trying to push it down because they're trying to send a statement back to us. Fuck you. And we're saying fuck you back. Excuse me, Celeste. Put your earmuffs on. So I'm doing this every day for a long time. You want to get me riled up? I'm riled up now. There you go. So Wes Christian went to the South Texas College of Law. So he didn't go to Harvard, but he still wants no. to be paid <laughs> as a lawyer. I met, Wes, I met Wes Christian. He was a real estate lawyer, lawyer, lawyer in Texas. I met John O'Quinn. It was O'Quinn, Lara, Mac, and Pirtle. Everybody in front of Wes Christian took a left. It means they dropped dead. So Wes has become the leader because everybody in front of him died. Tom Pirtle had cancer. Lara Mac retired, and John O'Quinn died in a car crash. Sounds like so uh, they're gonna remember everything about this stuff. It's gonna sound like war. And I met Wes. Wes was part of the team, but he was outside counsel and he was doing he was doing uh, real estate law. And listen, he ter- he turned himself into a nice business. He understands it. He gets out there and he speaks. But again, he's a long term player. Long term, I know him twenty years now. He's doing well, and I'm broke. Figure that one out. Who does all the work all day? You hear Wes Christian talking all the time? No. You hear me talking? Yep. Um, I didn't know this, but you know the name Ari Rubenstein, don't you? Is he with Yorkville? I can't remember. Anyway, he he's the guy that got MMTLP trading, and I think he's on the board or something at FINRA. Oh, yeah, I've seen that guy's picture up. Yeah, young, young, a guy like 45, 50 years old. Yeah, I've seen his picture. Yeah, anyway. I don't know. Somebody don't know. pointed that out. He's the one that got it trading? Apparently. That's... He, should be, he should be arrested for fraud right there. That guy should go to jail immediately. I don't know who he is. I think he's on the board of NASDAQ or something like that, too, or something like that. I forget what he was. Have you been following P-O-L? Piece, piece of lolly? P-O-L, uh, no, 126 million shares today, which is 63 times its $2 million float. <laughs> and it's up. I, I forget. I looked it up, but I, it's up today. Some Somebody else, not th- this person mentioned it, but somebody, two other people did. Uh, and you know what? That's the best part the about one. Wall Street. That's the best part of Wall Street. We don't have eyes. That's why trading desks were built. Because we can't all watch all the stocks. How does William know how transactions with hookers are managed? Well, I've watched movies. There you go. Uh, You have to be, uh, you don't have to be uh, Elon Musk to figure that out. You want a service, you got to pay for it, right? You want to get a hot dog? I like a hot dog, so that's $3. There's my $3, here's your hot dog. There you go. Think about it. Listen, William, listen, this is not this is not here to entertain you. This is about security fraud. I'll ask questions or I answer questions about it. I told you I'm working with the Secret Service and the FBI. What else do you want me to say? Is there anybody left? We called out the SEC for five years straight. Called them out. Called them every name in the world. MMTLP is abusing them. They have senators, congressmen, everybody yelling at them. What else can we do? But so it's going to break. And when it breaks, the low-hanging fruits go into jail. Kramer's, Yorkville, 
Lynn Partners, uh, Alpine, uh, all those, Ari Rubenstein, all these type of characters are all going to get taken away. They have to go away because the system has to be protected against this. If they, I got to get out of the car. If they don't protect the system, the whole, the whole thing is going to collapse. So the, what are they going to do? They won't, they won't, they'll shut down Ken Griffin, they'll slow it down. He'll survive. Everyone else is going to go to jail. The crane is Charlie Mayo, Alpine. All these guys are going to go to jail. Yeah, how Mintz, they're going to get the low hanging fruit. They're going to come with the yellow bus and pick them all up and chain them all together. There you go. That's what's going to happen. So not legal okay. advice. We could have talked about Oscar Meyer wieners. Anyway, I, um, he's pointing out. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, Joanna is saying that Ari Rubenstein was with GTS Securities. Oh, GTS, yeah, that's what, yeah, I said, yeah, GTS. And he was on the advisory board for FINRA, but was removed, and he's in hiding now. Yeah, that's that, it's, what happens. They used an official to help get it passed, right? They probably used his name, or he helped get, helped get it through. They reached out to him. And said, hey, we're all short the stock. You got to get this thing listed so we can trade it, so we can try to cover it and get people to sell the dividends from Torchlight. That's what it was about. So there you go. That guy belongs in jail a year ago. Not, 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 we don't have to wait two more minutes for this. He's the one that created this mess. He belongs in jail. Why isn't he in jail? People lost. I don't know how much money in MMTLP. Think about that. It was up to twelve dollars. If it's six <laughs> this guy, is. this guy, I just this just rubs. I know you don't care, but I just happened to look at this guy with three first names. Wall Street sold three hundred million from me, and I'm getting it back. GNS, but then he lists how to do it. Um, issue a special dividend that's trackable. That's you. You taught him how to do that. I said that. You just, taught him. You have to. But he's, you have to. Listen, you have to do a special dividend. It's so that the when you initiate, when you do a special dividend, you can give out a bag of shit. But I want my bag of shit. All right. When the date comes, a record date, it's etched in stone. The shareholders on that date are shareholders of record. They cannot change that number. This, That's why you have to do the dividend. This, We're not giving away gold bars. We're right. giving away a bag of shit. And the bag of shit is so that we can count up how many shareholders there are. That's the game. Because in a given day, people buy and sell stock. It's always changing, right? But when you do a special dividend, you get a record date. The music stops. Everyone needs a seat. When you sit down, you should have a stock that matches your holdings. That's why you do a special dividend. That's the only reason they do a special dividend. So everyone who thinks they're getting a special dividend because it's going to make you rich or you're getting your special, it's nothing. It's here so we can count the shareholders. That's it. Have you GTI played pickleball tried, today? GTI, GTII <laughs> tried to give a special dividends out that would break the system. And the SEC and the DTC shut them down every time they tried. Think about that. How do those companies, how does the DTC and the SEC have control over a public company? They were just going to give out a crypto coin because the short can't deliver a crypto coin to anybody. They were going to give pieces of a Picasso because the short can't deliver a piece of a Picasso. All these little crazy things were designed to try to give to expose the shorts and they block you. Now tell us there's no security fraud. Have you played pickleball you today? Down. No, I need to. That's you're getting worked up, but anyway, listening to reading on from this guy that has three first names, Action Eight. This makes me think he may have been planted. Action Eight. He has all these actions. Action Eight have reverse splits approved. Increase. I have it already approved by your board and shareholders. It takes away the risk of delisting in the event you're exchange. Okay. I mean, he's right there. That's the bomb of all bombs. 
That's what they want you to do, you idiot. Exactly. <laughs> this guy is giving the information to kill you. So what is he? What's his name? That guy who's the Dr. Kevorkian? Is that it? He's oh, yeah, Kirk Kevorkian. When yeah, are you going to realize this is a bad doctor? <laughs> <laughs> this guy's trying to kill you. He's telling you to prepare your company for death. Yeah. yeah. Do you realize in every filing that the company's got to come out and say, hey, that uh, in case that we can't raise money, we we're going to go out of business? No shit. But the SEC makes that put that in the disclaimer. The first thing that should be on every financial statement is, hey, we need to know how many people, how many, what's the real count of our company? We have no idea. No company knows. How many shares are in our company? We have no idea. <laughs> that should be part of the, that should be part of your disclosure. Hey, don't invest in GTII. There's almost 500 million counterfeit shares in the stock, and the stock is never going to move unless they buy it back. That's what it should say on the cover of every disclosure. But the company comes out and says that, the SEC will attack them saying, how do you have proof of this thing? And they said, well, we've been counting it. Well, yeah, you can't say that. That's what they'll say. Hey, Carter's World, I'm just going to stick up for Ham very much. Ham is great at what he does, and he is teaching you, everyone here, information that I wish I had when I was at Merrill and then at what's now Morgan Stanley. But you, you, you know, whatever. Listen, keep your just, comments. He's just blowing keep smoke up his ass. Get out. He's listening. He's not even a broker. He's a well, kid. he's talking about how you haven't made money on Finger yet. Well, the point is, whoa, 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 Ham's whoa, whoa, a trader. Whoa, 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 whoa. Listen, dummy, the stock was 60 cents. It went to 10, went back down, and it went to 9. It went oh, back no, down, he's talking about back. GNS. He's talking about GNS. He's not talking about you. He's talking about GNS. Sorry. Well, it, he didn't well, say listen, it. When he came out, he squeezed the stock when he made the big statement about the dividend and that he had the FBI guy, whoever it was. I think the FBI is going to oversee the short selling. Can you just, if you want to ask, I don't want to get a piss and match about GNS. I don't really care. Wow. GTII is now trading at 45 cents flat. So whoever bought it at 0.4499 is up. Point zero 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 one. What a trader. <laughs> By the way, the volume hasn't really changed in half an hour. Right. Um, there, again, there's no selling. Everybody believes in what they're doing here. They've done their legwork, I hopefully, and we all know the frauds here. That's it. If you don't believe this fraud here, go to South Korea and go read their press releases. That's the government catching people selling naked short or counterfeit shares. We have it here too. Cow mints. Go read about how mints. Go read about the Kramers. I'm going to go find Avid's video where he outlined all the crimes the Kramers were busted in for. They were labeled as bad actors. They were banned, this, that, and the other thing. Yet they keep trying to re keep, keep changing their names, opening up new LLCs. And for those who don't know, they retained an attorney who's trying to open up a new prime broker funded with $10 million from a bunch of crooks. I, How's that? They, because the Alpine disappeared, no one will take their business to have to start their own again. And I, they want to be self-clearing so that no one can see what they're doing. They don't want anybody to look into well, their Well, he business. wants to control. They're he, hiding it. They want to make sure no one sees what they're doing. Right. And anyway, he, listen, yeah. William, I'm done. It's 4 right. o'clock. I have to get keep moving. I got to get back in the Go. Car. I'll see you later. All right. Thanks a lot, Ham. Thank you. Got it. Thanks. Sorry for your last questions. I was going to I was going to ask him, but you see how it goes. I was going to ask Steve Stephen. I was going to correct Carter's world. And um, thank you. You're right. I sometimes when I move it over here, I can read it over there. I sometimes get it a little bit. I'm only zooming. Who's zooming? Who, who? Wow. GTII. The ask has moved up to 45.7. So maybe GTII is going to get on a plane and fly to Toronto tomorrow. GDC. Flat. No, 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 no. Sorry. Let me go back to GTII. I, I was reading after hours, I think. 
Yeah, GTII, the last trade was 43266. Oh, 0.432660. Why do we need this in the markets? Why do we need this? All for greedy Ken Griffin. All right, GDC closed at 270. 2.700000. Wow. Finger closed at 3770000. Uh, Logique closed at 0.030000. And I guess that was down. But remember, that has a huge spread. The spread they're showing right now is 0.0212 by 0.035. That, so if you buy that one you and you had to sell it right away, it wouldn't be pretty. Also, whoever the, mar the market maker, in my opinion, or the market makers, and they're not really market makers, They've widened that so they can make a lot of money because the, you know, if, if somehow they're able to buy close to the bid and sell to somebody, they're making 100% on their money, more than 100% on the trade. And man, they can go buy some, buy some uh, good times at night. Uh, and they do such a valuable job. CLNV, I don't know why I'm looking at that, but it's actually up a little bit. 0 0.039640. Uh, CAUD, I think, is significantly down. Well, 4.5%. 1.27930. Look, all of these, and I've got to cross this day off. This is December. This is December. And this is tax loss selling season. So we've really got tomorrow. I don't think there'll be much trading on Friday. So you're probably going to see a lot of these stocks a lot lower on Friday. People are going to be traveling and uh, the streets are going to be empty for Lucky Boy. Uh, Tuesday, I bet people are away from their desks. All this week, you're going to see stocks going lower. What does that mean? You can bemoan it or you can say, wow, I can add to my position. I can't give you specific advice because I don't know you. And if I did know you, I wouldn't want to be you. No, just kidding. I'm just telling you that to the opportunistic, the intrepid, the well-informed, the courageous, the, the bargain-hunting investor, these next few days could work out to be a nice trade. And and it doesn't really have January here. Um, but January, anyway, I don't have a Jan. Well, here's Washington Post. Yeah, here's January. The January effect. The January effect. By this day, all of these stocks or enough of them could be up that you have a nice profit for a trade. Do you know that the Washington Post just took the special section, the Ukrainian war, down? That means the, you know, uh, Lauren Sanchez's husband paid less for the Washington Post than he received for Amazon in a um, contract to build the CEI, uh, CIA's 
cloud presence. He received a bigger contract from the CIA than he paid in terms of dollars than he paid for the Washington Post. You don't think that it's possible that, and I believe it, I see it all the time, these, these talking heads, these journalists, they all say the same thing. I don't, you know, they know if they don't, they're not going to have their job. I think that is getting very close to what they accuse one candidate of doing. I think it's already happening. I can't fill you in on that. Um, uh, sorry, Stephen. I, 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 I just, he hung up on me. Um, hey, Heidi. Heidi, ho. Heidi, hi. I don't think they'd have any interest. I'm sure they know about it, though, trucking. Um, the large investor in Finger, Wolf, GDC, um, one other one, can't remember. And oh, he was in CRTD, and he's also in GTII. But it doesn't fit the parameters, you know. Unless GTII buys a Southeast Asian company, it's always possible. But I, I don't think it really fits the parameters. I think Univest has had a long uh, dance with finger motion. We live in a world that that was coffee, not something else. Uh, we live in a world that um, if you order a computer on Amazon, you want it delivered in 45 minutes. Or if you your baby's crying and you, you need diapers, you can order it on uh, some site and it will be delivered to you in 20 minutes. So we get really impatient. Oh, the Univest, they're, 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 why, why hasn't anything happened? Frankly, they put out the um, shelf registration on September 11th. And then that Thursday, which would have been... Uh, 12th the 14th i think they did their they fulfilled their reg d sorry reg fd requirements full disclosure something that criminals never do so that was that thursday um but anyway just go from the 11th we're not even at 90 days we're not even at 90 days so we have to go well past Elvis Presley's birthday. Not well, a couple of few days, a couple of handful of days. Well, his answer to that in the past is that they try not to step on each other's toes, the criminals. They try to stay out of each other's place and then they come help each other because they know it is an ongoing constant source of huge profits while adiana friedman ignores it with her toothsome smile and her cv that she got kicked upstairs over and over and over again for an obvious reason it's not talent Um, yeah, he joined CEO Block, which was started by um, Jeremy Frommer. I know, I like Jeremy Frommer. I know from talking to Jeremy that um, 
Jeremy doesn't quite believe the magnitude of the problem. I, he may now. I haven't talked to him since his stock went under a penny. But he just simply did not believe that Jeff Easton, Philip Vallier, I. Lee Kim, Sam Chung, and John Howard, a uh, uh, handcuff, could do this. And the problem is a lot of it, just like, can you see an electron? Can you see light, the speed of light? Can you, without the aid of a fantastic um, telescope, can you see back in time enough to see the Big Bang? And then they put up the JST telescope, and it turns out the Big Bang may be not what happened because there's there's six universes they found in full form at almost the dawn of time. So we take a lot of things that we assume, but we can't fully explain. But to Jeremy Frommer, he cannot make, or he could not make the leap that what he was seeing in trading, that the criminals were selling stock before the note center, during the note, and then in massive counterfeiting size. Do you have proof? Can I, can I see it? Well, the proof is circumstantial. It's right there. It's, it's in the price. Yeah, but, you know, it's just the computers. It's just there's systems in place. That kind of assumption that number one, you have to treat the criminals like gentlemen, and they're all men, it seems like. They're all a certain kind of man, it seems like. Um, and then the regulators apologize, everyone apologizes, oh, it's all okay. It's just like everyone apologizing for a lot of things going on. If you don't want to see, there's nobody blinder than he who just won't see. And ain't it a shame that you won't share your life with me? Um, I want to see CJYL71. Yeah, so Mark, I don't know what your point is. Um, uh, if you want to give ha hosannas to Ro James Roger Hamilton, do. But I just read to you the poison pill. He can come in. He's the cheerleader. I'm fighting. I'm doing this and that. And he maybe is. I don't know him. But then in his... 10 points, 8 points, and he, he gets in on your side. He's on your side. He puts in there the one thing CEO should not do after they've taken toxic financing from the criminal. The number one thing they should not do is a reverse split. But he fits it in. So, Mark, you're, you're credulous. That's what you are. And uh, um, I don't blame you. It, it shouldn't be your job to understand the markets or to see uh, what that there might be bad actors out there. It's not your job to do that. It's Adiana Friedman's, Robert Cook, uh, Gary Gensler, whoever the heck is running uh, over-the-counter markets. I forget his name. Complete, complete. Uh, Completely promoted above his skill level. Completely. R. Cromwell Carlson. R. Cromwell Carlson. More about R. Cromwell Carlson. He's the president, CEO, and director of OTC Markets Group, responsible for the company's overall growth and strategic strategic direction.
Since leading the acquisition of OTC Market's predecessor business in 1997, Cromwell has transformed the company from a privately held publisher of broker-dealer quotations into a publicly traded company operating three public markets for 12,000 securities, which trade nearly $445 billion in dollar volume annually. And he's codified a way for Wall Street to steal and rip off entire market caps of thousands of companies that are stupid enough to want to be on Cromwell Carlson's OTC markets. He is a strong advocate of improving capital formation. Yeah, capital, capital form this. Supporting a diverse ecosystem of broker-dealers. <laughs> and empowering investors. That sounds like the modern feminist movement, empowering men, women by having them increase their body count beyond any number that any man would find uh, uh, attractive. But it's empowering. Anyway, empowering investors with increased disclosure and transparency. He has testified before Congress. Oh, wow, he's testified. He's lied before Congress and spoken on these and other issues at numerous industry conferences. Cromwell is currently the co-chair of the Standing Market Structure Committee and a former chair Oh, for one year of FINRA Market Regulation Committee, which advises FINRA on rulemaking and trading issues. He's an insider. He's a quizzling. He's there to steal from you, destroy market caps, destroy companies. So someday he can, he can work at Goldman Sachs. Cromwell was an institutional trader. That's all you need to know. He's on the side of the criminals and a portfolio manager at Car Securities Corporations. Ah, he holds an OPM. You better get your OPM from Harvard Business School. And re he received his BBA from Southern Methodist University. I Everything I say for the entirety of the time on this is my opinion, my judgment and uh, uh, check your own facts. Um, let's just see how Mr. R. Cromwell Coulson, let's see how much he makes. While he's empowering you. I hope it's not more than Adiana uh, Friedman, because that would be unfair. She should make more than he does. Well, he makes, to me, sounds like a hell of a lot of money, but it's much more reasonable than Ms. Freeman. Friedman. He makes 924940 as that's the total compensation that he gets. Our Cromwell Colson. I'm not a big fan of all these guys. Well, Wes Christian may still be working with him. And maybe, you know, maybe, I don't know this guy, but he may, look, you can defend him. I've always been suspicious because he's an I I I I I I I I I I I I I guy. And as I was told by someone I met the other night at a gathering, there's no I in we. And I said, no shit, Sherlock, but you asked me about myself. So how is gonna answer your question about me 
without using I. But anyway, um, uh, uh, I think it's possible that either he has a huge blind spot or he was put there to put a narrative out there to help the criminals. I also think that of Friedman, Colson, Cook, Gensler, uh, uh, we've, we, there's so many names. It's tiresome. I don't know why you hold GNS. It's going down. Here's what GNS does. Eighty cents. Well, they've got profits. They have revenue growth. That's good, and they have profits. Um, they paid eighteen million December nineteenth. Genius Group a leading entrepreneur of EdTech and the education group, remember GTII bought one of those, today announced that it has extinguished 18 million in convertible notes 15 months ahead of schedule. Now it's my opinion that like termites getting in the beams of your foundation, if you don't get them out of there, if you extinguish one or two beams it, there they've spread to the 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 foundation beams and up to the other foundation uh wood and then up to the other beams they signed the note with alto opportunity master fund a criminal there you go okay Combination of cash and converted ordinary shares. So they gave shares. He gave shares to cover the criminal shorts. Now the good news, the good news here, he's designed a company that has, and it is really good news, Five days ago, um, out of Singapore, leading entrepreneur in ed tech and education, so their first half earnings call was held on September 29. Uh, and the guidance is being updated as further annual revenue is expected to be 27 million to 29 million which is up from 2022's revenue of 18 million so that's a 40 to 60 percent potential increase net profit is expected to be three to five million previously it was going to be negative 15 Student and user growth is expected to be five, six million. That's an increase. Um, he commented in 2022, we had our IPO and completed six acquisitions. That's good. That's good because you're adding revenue. You're adding bulk. That's good. If we meet our earnings guidance, we would have achieved the financial goals we began the year with. That's good, too. So those are some positives, Mark. Um, Eck talks about, talks about partnerships and awards and par other partnerships. 
insiders join the CEO and provide two million in funding. I hope it's not toxic. Another thing CEOs do, and I'm not saying he does, but they allow companies to flounder. They take money, they earn money. They might trade, as I believe the, the other guy did in overseas markets, they might trade and then they buy and it looks like they're rescuing, but they're really increasing their ownership, which is good in the long run, but it, it's all by way of cramming investors down. But I'm not saying that that's what he did here. All right, they don't describe the funding, but they put in. I don't want to go look it up. I, I don't have that much care. That's a positive that they put money in, but it doesn't say the terms. He's got a 10-year performance plan to become a billion-dollar company. And I would argue, Mark, that his ability to meet his targets and goals would augur very well that this company will become a 1 billion market cap. Now, the thing you need to make sure is that 1 billion market cap isn't done with a trillion shares outstanding, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen now. Um, but I don't know. And then more partners, partners, he put four million on two months of uh, two months ago, and then he and his group last month put two million in. So, on the positive side, he's not going to the criminals. That's the positive side of it, and it's also he's putting his money where he where he puts his uh, puts his. Uh, talk. I don't know what this means. The market cap of the company is $60 million. I don't, I don't know how to compare it to anyone else. Um, profit margin says, wow, well, it's negative. So at this point, you're taking his word which I I don't see any reason why he wouldn't be truthful in his last that last thing I just read, but they're going to start making money. That's the only way you can get out of this crap is to start making money so you never have to go back to the pin. You have to get off the heroin and stop sleeping with Johns, eat better, start feeling better about yourself, stop drinking go to a, a program and uh, slowly you come back to health, you have self-respect. And that by way of doing that is just having revenue and income. And if the stock goes off of NASDAQ or all those things, you ignore it. No reverse splits. Just slowly build up that revenue and, and, and uh, profitability. No, you know, there are a couple of places to do reverse splits that I've talked about before, but um, then if you have if you have uh, income, you can buy back shares and you can flip it on that. But here's a here's something that bugs me: their total cash is two point seven eight million. Their debt is eighteen million. So that he took that out. That's good. That is good. But it says here their operating cash flow is minus 12 million. So, Mark, the thing is, is it going to go into positive cash flow? I don't know. I don't see what, and I don't want to look it up. I don't want to go through the effort. I don't know what his burn rate is. But to me, it doesn't sound like $3 million is a lot of money if he's got negative cash flow at 12 million, a million a month, maybe. So that money won't last three months. I don't know. I don't know. So that then the question, Mark, the whole thing the criminals want to do 
is to destroy the denominator. So right now it's got 74 million shares outstanding. How many did he, because this is still showing the debt, maybe I'll look that up. So it's got how many shares outstanding? Yeah, 74 million with a float of 60 million. How many shares did he issue to get rid of the debt? And you have to look it up. I mean, you just, it's, it's legwork. Well, it's finger work. I can't find this stupid company. Maybe it's, maybe it's, um, Maybe it's my ability to spell. I ain't no genius. I'm a terrible, terrible speller. A foreign issuer, certain foreign private issuers. Ugh. That gets, that's a whole nother world. 925. So 1219. 1219. Let's look at that one. In December 19th, Genius Group issued a press release regarding the payment in full of 18.13 million principal amount of convertible debt. But I, I don't see, Mark, where it describes how many shares he issued. Let's see if this has it. On December 14th, the company signed an amendment to the convertible bridge loan agreement entered into with RJH, to date, Mr. Hamilton has provided the company 1.9 million director's loan, and he has agreed with the company that 1 million will be converted into the same equity and upon the same terms that are pursuant to the next qualified financing round. I think that's about all you can expect. So he's going to go in at, I don't know if the next qualified round will be what it'll be, but he's not taking advantage of it. It's about all you can expect. But he's going to get the other million, 900,000, is either going to be cash or converted into shares. So that, that share, that's out increasing the number of shares. I don't see any discussion of let's see if I can find this alto group god it's so many filings I hate doing this Oh, God. I, I don't have the time, Mark, to go through all of those one by one. Uh -huh. Okay. So he and the insiders have been funding it recently. 
Okay. I... All this work for, I just, I'm not sold on this. Um, All right, there's a lot of news about paying 18.13 million of convertible. Okay, on August 25, 2022, so I could go back and look that up, but let's just see what it says. Genius Group, a worldwide leading entrepreneur, ed tech, and education group. GTII bought an education group. I raised money for education groups. It's not a unique idea. On the other hand, he they say they're a worldwide leader. So I, I don't know enough to contradict. So they sold 18.13 million principal amount of senior secured convertible notes that gives criminals the right to just start selling the stock. But if you don't want to believe it, don't. In a private placement with an institutional investor, they love that. Oh, great. We can go to one place. They just represent criminals. The note will have 30 month maturity with a conversion price of $5.17 per ordinary share with an interest rate of 5%. That all sounds so reasonable. Beginning three months following the closing, the company is required to make equal monthly installment payments of the note through the maturity date which payments are payable in cash or ordinary shares, get the stock going down. You, you can't calculate the, denom the uh, denominator and it's ever increasing amount. That is called a death spiral note. And this genius signed it. But he's not unique. He's just not a genius. Look, I have told you the story. I'm not going to bore you with it now. But I watched a third generation oil and gas company get destroyed by this. I was the only one, according to the CEO, and they're all standing around me. And I had written a letter to the board pointing out that he was going to lose his company, that the denominator was going to go to crap, and that he should raise $6 million to immediately buy back his $5 million note. I said, if you don't do anything, you'll lose your company. Bill, you're the only one here that thinks that's a night. Boom, 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 boom. Everyone's looking at me. My face is turning red. I'm standing there feeling the pressure. The banker was standing two over. I didn't really know. I turned to him. I said, you did the deal. Is anything I'm saying wrong? He dipped down to his gin and tonic, looked at his shoes for a while. There was something very interesting on his shoes, and he just walked away. And I stood my ground. But it was really uncomfortable. No one agreed with me. About, about six, well, there was somebody out of Oklahoma, a good guy, who thank God, became a billionaire on another project. Um, and I, I remember congratulating him. And he said, Bill, you sound like you mean it. And I said, yeah, I mean it. <laughs> That's great. But anyway, he, he, he and his wife and partner agreed with what I had said, but they didn't have any control. Well, sure enough, sure enough, the guy lost his company. Everybody they invested, including I had a small position, worthless. And um, the guy became a stockbroker. Third generation oil and gas company. So I'm not, 
I don't just say this because I'm trying to be an asshole. It's there. But hey, this genius signed it. The only problem I have, he claims to be a genius. He claims to suddenly have learned. He got a lot of all of that, except for the recommendation to get reverse splits. He got it all from him. And, and I think he's been extraordinarily destructive and abusive to the investors that were gathered here. He didn't gather the investors, but he came in front with his pom-poms and his drum, drum major, hey, look at me, look at me. And I think he's taken advantage, maybe not of you specifically, Mark, but a lot of people, just like I think COSM did. But I could be wrong. Maybe I'm an asshole. I've never met this guy. But he didn't know what he was doing when he signed this August 25, 2022. What changed? He met Ham. But what changed? Did he become a genius in a year? Okay, let's go try to look this up. Such a pain in the butt. August 25, 2022. August 25. So distracting from other things we could be doing. August 25. There's no announcement on that day. There's no announcement on that day. Could I see? Oh, here. There's 9.15. August 25, there's eight. Well, let's see what the draft registration statement says. Genius group run by a genius. Revenue growth, they have a very good present. He has a very good presentation. I have to give him that. All right, here's the prospectus. Uh, prospectus summary, AI, and that's the buzzword. Convertible notes, 18130000 purchased for $17 million. Okay, so it's a discount to par. So when they say purchased, you got to flip-flop it. In other words, um, Genius is borrowing $17 million, but has to, the face amount is $18,130,000. That's a, discounted to, a discount to par. Closed on August 26th. They are convertible into up to three million five hundred and six thousand seven hundred and seventy of our ordinary shares at a fixed price of five seventeen. If that remains true, if that remains true as we read, you, one would argue, oh, that's very reasonable. The ordinary shares issuable of on should are being registered and will be sold pursuant to this prospectus by the selling shareholders. Okay, here's the trouble. In addition, subject to the satisfaction of equity conditions, we may at our election, 
That sounds good, but it, it won't. Listen, make monthly principal amortization payments. I just read to you that they had to make monthly payments <laughs> in either cash or stock. So the at uh, this is saying at our election, that assumes they have the stock to pay. If they, I'm mean, sorry, the cash to pay. They don't have the cash to pay. They don't have any choice but to amortize with stock. Do you hear what I'm saying? All right. So the, he says it. We may at our election bamboozled. Not much of a genius. Um. But but in fairness to the CEO, it shouldn't be his job to understand this. And I, I would argue he doesn't. And I would argue his rules for doing it, he doesn't get it either. But he does get building a company, it looks like. And he does get building a valuable brand. And I, I guess Genius Group is in an area particularly during the COVID period, that must have seen a lot of demand. So my, it's up to Adiana Friedman to fight for guys like this. But she just sits on her probably nice pert ass collecting $28 million, uh, uh, and Tootham smile. What is she doing? I'm not trying to – I mean, I'd say the same thing about the – Cromwell Carlson. I just don't know anything about. I don't look at men's asses, um, but he's he is an ass, in my judgment. All right. Uh, all right. So listen to this. In addition, subject to the satisfaction of equity conditions, we may at our election make monthly principal amor amortization payments in our ordinary shares. Well, that's that's above and beyond this convertible into this fixed price and into this specific number of three and a half million shares. This is above and beyond that. Now listen, if we elect to make amortization payments in ordinary shares, if we elect, Sounds reasonable. But if they don't have the cash and they were losing cash, they have no choice. It's a death spiral note. And I personally don't think you need to be a genius to see this. But for some reason, people who feel they're geniuses don't see the risk. If we elect to make amortization payments in our ordinary shares, such, now listen to this, such ordinary shares will be valued at the lowest of X, the fixed conversion price. So that's $5.17. Hey, that sounds reasonable. Why? 90% of the volume weighted average price of our ordinary shares on the trading day preceding the amortization payment date. So it's owed, it's owed on the 15th. What will the criminals do? We'll find out the name. We'll find out the name of the lender. Oh, it's not us. It's we. We didn't do it. <laughs> well, there's lots of LLCs. There's clients behind them. Or, so anyway, on the 15th, on the 14th, for, for a month, they just sell the stock down, 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 down. And they know the company doesn't have cash. They know they're going to convert. And I'm... On top of that, they get the lowest price because they created the lowest price over whatever time frame, 30 days, 60 days. They get a 10% discount to that price in the calculation. Or 90% of the average of the three lowest 
volume weighted average prices for our ordinary shares during the 20 trading days preceding the amortization payment. So all the criminals have to do is to get it really low for three days out of a month. If they can get it really low on the last day, that's in their favor. If for some reason a a deuce a machine comes and you know suddenly uh, the Bra Brazilian education minister gives them a contract for all the schools and colleges in Brazil, and the stock goes up on the day before the money's due. They have those three lowest days. So if we elect, the shares will be valued at the lowest of the fixed conversion price, $5.17, or 90% of the VWAP for one day's trading preceding the payment date, or the 90% of the VWAP of the three lowest trading days. So, Mark, no institutional investor would invest in this company. You want to know why, Mark? They can't figure out the denominator. But the genius signed this, and he's giving the advice to everybody, and he was a genius a year before. I think, I mean, it looks like he really runs a good company, but there's so many good companies out there. So we believe that we are a world leading entrepreneur, ed tech, and education group. Well, why would you be in business if you didn't think something good about yourself? Our mission is to disrupt the current education model with a student-centered, lifelong learning curriculum that prepares students. See, if I'm, I'm not a genius, and I'm not picking on him. Everybody uses that. I would use which. I wish someone would explain me the difference. A learning curriculum that prepares students with the leadership, entrepreneurial, and life skills to succeed in today's market. It's all bullshit. Hey, you guys, company after company gives these just... To help achieve our mission, we have grown from a pre-IPO group of four companies to a post-IPO group of eight companies well, I, I like that, actually. I like that. Our pre-IPO group includes our holding company, Genius Group Limited, our EdTech platform, Genius U Limited, and two companies that were acquired. See, I would say which were acquired. Well, which is right? Which is correct? Everyone uses that. Entrepreneurs Institute was one, and then Entrepreneur Resorts was another that they acquired. As of December 31, 2021, the pre-IPO group had 2.66 million students with 2.62 million free and 37,000 paying students. Guys, we are expanding our education system. All right, the entrepreneur education system of our pre-IPO group has been delivered virtually and in person in multiple languages, locally and globally, mainly through our Genius U EdTech platform to adults seeking to grow their, by the way, I'll leave my opinion of using the word to grow. Their entrepreneur and leadership skills, their entrepreneurial and leadership skills. But anyway, whatever. My 
my sense of English, I guess, is must be all wrong. Our partners and community are our partners and community. The first word is plural. The second word word is singular, but he's British, so it might be the way they do it. Are global with an average of seven thousand five hundred new students joining each week. That's that's not a bad growth. A um, hundred cities, twenty five hundred faculty members operating micro schools using our online tools. We are expanding our education system to age groups beyond our adult audience to children and young adults who have no money. The four IPO acquisitions that are included in this perspective, prospectus are our first step towards this expansion. Education Angels, that's New Zealand. E Square, that's South Africa. Uh, University Antelope Valley, California. Property Investors Network, UK. The four IPO acquisitions added 16 million in revenue to the group. In coming years, we plan to continue the growth of our group through a combination of organic growth. That's good. I like that. Uh, and acquisitions. Well, if you seek money from these kind of criminals, that destroys the company. But he, it sounds like from you, Mark, that he's learned his lessons. I'm going to try to skip some of this. Here's all the companies. It's too complicated. It's just too complicated. But anyway, I mean, it's good for retail. I just don't know any institutions that are going to look at this. And... We are following a 15-year growth plan. You know, that's pretty impressive that he's got it mapped out and that he's meeting his marks. I have to admit that. He gives some names. Okay, here's the convertible notes. Okay, I'm going to skip a lot of this crap and try to get to the deal. They have four pillars. Our strategy, three phases. Number one, we're going to educate entrepreneurs. Number two, we're going to expand into schools and colleges. And three, we're going to establish a full alternative curriculum. Well, okay, here's the securities purchase agreement. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, it's tranches. It's tranches, Mark. It's tranches. The initial tranche of eight and a half million will be released upon the latest of, oh, and it's got rules. Let me see what, uh, let me see who's doing it. They don't name the company. Oh yeah, they do. The Alto Master Fund. I'll just take a picture of that. The Alto Master, the Alto Opportunity master fund um, with its segregated master portfolio B will act as the collateral agent. The blocked cash may be released to the company in up to three disbursements. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Tranches are the death down mark. The initial tranche of eight and a half million will be released upon the latest of one, effectiveness of the registration, two, shareholder authorization, and the issuance of the underlying shares for the convertible note. 
provided that the release at, uh, the, at the date of release, the company is in compliance with the minimum cash test, the minimum cash test. So that's a hook that it's going to keep the CEO on his toes to reverse split if he has to. No event of default has occurred. That's when they reverse split. And no circumstance exists with the passion of, passions of time. The second tranche of eight and a half million will re be released following the date of the third installment payment. So he's got to make three distributions. So it's 90 days. That gives the criminals time to sell stock in the open market down, 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 down. They take that cash to pay him his own money or, or some part of it. And they take fees. Um, and the ratio of the company's total indebtedness to market cap is no greater than 33%. Well, they're destroying the market cap. They're destroying it. And then C, following the third installment, it's $5 million. All right, that's enough for reading that. Okay, here. We may redeem the convertible notes in full with three trading days notice subject to the fulfillment of certain equity conditions at the sum of the redemption value plus any accrued but unpaid and make whole interest beginning three months following the closing of the securities purchase agreement. We will repay the convertible notes in 28 monthly equal installments at the redemption value of the convertible note, basically 18.3 million divided by 28 months. And if there's any penalties and interest rate in it. And we may choose to pay such installments in cash or ordinary shares, like we have a choice or a combo. Um, for at least 16 days, trading days in a period of 20 consecutive trading days, prior to the applicable date in question, the daily trading volume for the ordinary shares on the principal trading market exceeds 500,000 per trading day. The volume weighted average price of the ordinary shares on any trading day during 20 trading day period ending on the trading day immediately prior to the applicable date in question exceeds $2 adjusted for share splits, dividends, share combinations, recapitalizations. Three, the company is not in default of its obligations under the convertible notes. And four, there is an effective registration statement for the resale of issuable shares and five the compliance the company is in compliance with all new york stock exchange american listening requirements such installments shall be subject to the convertible note investors right that's the alto opportunity plus bust fund defer some of or all of any installment payment to a sub subsequent installment date, be at any time during an installment period, convert up to two and a half times the installment amount. If we elect to make installment payments in ordinary shares, such ordinary shares will be valued at the lowest of the fixed conversion rate or 90% of the VWAP on the day trading before the payment date or 90% of the VWAP of the three lowest weighted prices for 20 days. 
The convertible notes will include a limitation such that the holder's beneficial ownership will not exceed 4.99% of the company's shares outstanding, so they don't have to report. No one knows who they are. They, they have the right to buy 30% of any other offering. Upon completion of a change in control, the holders may require the company to purchase any outstanding convertible notes in cash at 115% of par value plus accrued but unpaid interest. As long as the convertible notes remain outstanding, the company is required at all times to maintain on deposit in the account subject to the deposit account control agreement an amount of cash equal to the greater of an amount equal to 33% of the positive difference between one, the aggregate amount of cash released from the blocked account in accordance with the release conditions and two, the aggregate installment amounts paid to the holders by the company and two million, the minimum cash test. Once the outstanding value is less than two million, the company will no longer be required to comply with the minimum cash test. Anyway, there's another really onerous cash test there. I'm not going to read it. There's the registration rights. Um, the company is going to file within 30 days of the closing date and have effective within 60 days of the closing date or 90 days after SEC review, a registration form F1 covering the resale of the shares issuable as a part of an installment payment on the convertible notes. My memory of F1 is it's a safe harbor for offshore, but I could be wrong. Beginning on the 31st day and the 61st day, for every subsequent 30-day period, the company shall pay the holders of the notes 2%, which is a fantastic rate of return, that um, principal amount in outstanding cash as liquidated damages. You can multiply 2 times 12. Yeah, it's a foreign private I I issuer. So they do have the safe harbor that's provided offshore. And I think it's Reg F, uh, I think. But it, it allows them to sell the stock sooner than if you were here. We will file with the SEC within four months, Form 20F, okay, the offering. Okay, I'm just going to try to skip that. Let's see how many shares they had when this was done. <laughs> I, I missed it. Uh, this is only a year and a half ago, but I can't find the number of shares. Might be, it might be my eyesight. It might not be here.
that's not it. Why not? And maybe they haven't said it yet. Oh, Mark, this is a long answer. It goes through the risk factors. I just, the, the final thing I want to read is the event of default. That might have already been defined. There's a lot of risk factors, but that's normal. But this is a long list, so maybe they have more risks than... I don't know why any CEO would sign a document like this. I, I just can't believe CEOs are that dumb. Maybe, but I think it's because there's no alternatives. Uh, capitalization, here it is. They had at that time 20 million shares pro forma, and now it's at 73 million. But it still does not, there's no definable amount. We'll have to wait till they make the filing. Uh, we don't know how many shares they pay to the Alto Opportunity Trust Bust Fund. Well, anyway, this is, I can't find a default. I give up. I guarantee the default, one of the default provisions is if you fall below the New York Stock Exchange price requirement. And that's why he, let me see if I can find the definition. Let me see if there's definitions at the front. I, I'm I'm gonna stop this. So anyway, Mark, um, this is disastrous financing, and by paying it off, you would think you're you've stepped out of deep doo doo, but you haven't. Oh, they did a six for one share split, so they did a four. No, they did a reverse split. Um, but sometimes the way the Brits write, write things, it's confusing. Anyway, the problem with this is you don't know what the denominator is. I cannot find out what, how many shares this was convertible into upon redemption, and it was probably a negotiation. So they have 75 million shares out now. It was 20 million. Who knows what, how many more they had to issue, and the company's situation really didn't improve on a per share basis that much. So the point is, Mark, that um, just by paying off this note doesn't get rid of the criminal selling. This note is here to give to the prime brokers to have lo shady lawyers write up saying, well, you're going to be protected. And then the prime broker allows the criminals, either the Alto Opportunity Trust Bust Fund directly, or their clients, or nominees they set up, just to sell, sell, sell. Because this prevents the black swan event bankrupting the prime broker. This is the hedge. But it, just paying it off doesn't stop the selling. They've already got a massive amount of shares out there. Whatever the, I'm going to guess because I can't find it here. Whatever the settlement agreement, they take this 18 million note, it's gone. That, that removes, that removes, that removes a few launches being issued. <clears throat> but it doesn't get rid and this is where some people disagree with me, but it does not get rid of all the counterfeited shares 
sold which do not exist, they're still out there. And it's in the criminal's benefit to keep the pressure on selling. Why? Because genius only has one source of funding, the CEO and a couple of, of investors. Well, the, unless they're Rockefeller, they're going to run out of money. And they're going to have to, this is the theory of the criminals. They're going to have to turn back to the pimp. Right now, the proxy is getting high on her own supply, but the supply will run out. And she's going to have to turn back to the pimp. That's one of the short thoughts. The other thing is, even if it's the CEO, even if it's close insiders, if they can get that price, price from 70 cents down to 25 cents, the next time the insiders and the CEO put in money, it'll be based on 25 cents. Now, the one thing I read, which I give him great credit for, he did a convertible note and he put it in there, half of which I think it's 1900000 The first half, $1 million, he agreed to take the conversion at the next deal's price. But if the criminals have their way, that next price will be lower than 70 cents. Anyway, Mark, that's my summary. It's very long. Uh, I don't think it looks particularly good for GNS. They have an ambitious business plan. Um, I think it's it makes a lot of sense. But I also think there's um, schools around the world and governments that he's in competition with. And uh, I think the financing really does its number. And it's not, I don't know why any, I mean, he's got four or $6 million he could have put in. Why the heck did he take 17 million from these criminals with a note like that? He can't sit down and figure it out, the risks. The problem is they believe that Adiana Friedman or whoever runs the NYSE, I should look that up, um, really have the interests of CEOs at heart. They don't. The regulators and the exchanges are there for Goldman Sachs at all. And that's just a fact. They're not there for you. They're not there for me. All right, the CEO and president of the New York Stock Exchange is Jeffrey Sprecher. Sounds German, which makes sense because I think the a German exchange bought the New York Stock Exchange to my memory. Um, they've got they've got one, two, three women listed as key executives versus one, two, three or five men. That's pretty fairly, that's not completely fair. But let's see what Jeffrey Sprecher makes in his salary. Ah, Jeffrey Sprecher does not make as much as a a d a Diana Friedman. He only makes fourteen million seven hundred and eighty-eight thousand. Oh, that's in two thousand and twenty-one. Uh, now he makes sixteen million seven hundred and three thousand. And guess how much he's worth. $687 million. Do you think he has your interests in heart? 
or or uh, genius groups, interests, and heart. All right, I'll go through some questions and then I'm gonna go walk my dog. You got me, Mark, on a subject that I never thought I would spend time on, but um, I think genius group signed a terrible toxic convertible death spiral note and just paying it off doesn't get them out of trouble. And that's just the sad fact of the somnolent uh, regulatory oversight in U.S. markets. You were saying the other day we need to pry. Oh, that's not not to me. Big Al knows what he's talking about. I think that's what happened. I think George P. I, I is that the guy at 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 um, oh, Cosmo? I don't know about MMAT. I don't know that guy at MMAT. I'm. I think he probably got hurt. Well, a lot of CEOs just look out for themselves. I've experienced that. Really private? I can't. I don't know what that. Oh, you're talking about a wrestling. Thank God. It's going to? I love it. Don't beat a dead horse to death. Well, I won't ever have to beat that dead horse to death again. I just, um, John, I, I, I received many questions on that today, and I guess I wanted to see if I was wrong, but every single one of the, you know, I, and John, I won't do it now because it'll bore, <laughs> it'll bore everybody. I was going to do it today. Here's the finger motion note. You know, I printed it out. I read it. Here is the securities purchase agreement. I printed it out and I read it. Combined. This is what Lynn Partners and their attorneys had finger motion sign. I was going to go through it. I think Lynn Partners has better attorneys than uh, Kurt Kramer. Ace is the place for the help. Full market and all right. I was talking about GNS. Uh, um, hey, Sean, I'm going to go quickly because he's he's really. Let me see. I'll go six more minutes. He's really walking around like I I am am torturing him. I think it is going toward a reverse split, and that is disaster Reno. I was trying to find that in the document, but I gave up. I bet there is an event of default that if you – let's just quickly look. What are the requirements? I don't know. I mean, I have a vague idea. I have a – you know, I know what I would answer on a test, but I'm not sure I'm right. So let me just rather than make it up. Okay. What are the requirements to stay on the New York Stock Exchange? 
the world's listing venue for mid and large cap companies. Yes, but what is your requirement? Reserve your ticker symbol, submit your application. All right, but what is it? All right, let me go back. Continued, here it is, continued listing requirements. You need to have 300 shareholders, 200,000 shares, and a market value of a million. You have to meet all of the following uh, financial criteria, 2 million in stockholders' equity, 4 million in stock holders that could that that and six men that all has to do with the losses financial condition a company cannot be impaired um the new york stock exchange will not suspend an issuer who is below one through three above if the issuer is in compliance with these four things 1.1 million publicly held shares 15 million market value of publicly held shares, 400 round lot holders, that's 100 shares or more, uh, of course, round lot, 50 million market cap or total assets and revenue of 50 million in each of the last fiscal year or two, in the last fiscal year or two of the last three. Anyway, it also says if your stock price sells for a low price for a substantial period of time uh, and or the issuer fails to effect a reverse split of such shares within a reasonable time, you can be de delisted. They don't define what a low price is exactly, but that's pretty amazing. So anyway, sub has the boss. That's the problem right there. Paying an off the note doesn't get rid of these requirements. Um, oh, thanks, Mark. I I know you'll dig. You'll do better digging than I will. Uh, <laughs> you saw how you saw how dense I am. Um, it made everyone annoyed that it it took so long. This is the coffee cup I'm using. So anyway, one more minute. I'm not going to get to all these questions, if there are any. Yeah, I'm still in that crime well collusion. I mean, I sold out at a huge loss. And then I bought back in. And I'm down on that. Um, let me just see these new questions. Okay, let's see what Big Al says. Get your account in order now. So if it gets settles, they don't get slammed with tens of thousands of Nextbridge. Very good advice by Big Al. Big Al is giving you great advice. The forms take four to six weeks. It is the car guys. It is the car guys. It used to be, it used to be brothers. It used to be brothers. Ray and I forget the other brother. Ham didn't say so. Ham didn't say so. 
All right, here's the forms you need to file, banking form, then W-9. And you can get them off the AST site. Big Al is, Big Al is the man. Big Al is the man. All right. Um, let me tell her I'll send a message. All right. Um, a guy that's been. Oh, Corey, you're saying me? A guy that's been pumping finger in GTII for over a year now critiquing GNS is rich. Why well, you had your moment of fame? Thanks for your opinion. I think you're wrong, but whatever. I uh, Finger made a mistake with its financing. I went through it. It's right there. I've talked about it. You weren't you weren't around, which is rich. And uh, I've gone through Finger. Finger Finger bought theirs back, and we talked about it. So it's rich that you're just coming in right now. Yeah, the lawyers get riches too. <laughs> I'll ask him that. I used to play slow pitch softball. All right, I'm going to go. I'm I'm really glad that guy got on and said it's rich. You don't have to be rich to rule my world. There ain't no particular sign I'm interested in. I just I can't get the words right. Need your touch, kiss. Uh, all right, I'm going to say good night. I'm going to go walk my dog, and I thank you for listening. I'm sorry if I bored you on GNS, but um, I think I think what I did was show why I have been skeptical on that for a while. I could be wrong. I could be rich. I could be rich, but, you know. You don't have to be rich. There ain't no particular sign that I'm interested in. I just want your something and your kiss. Um, all right, CB. They won't be there. Uh, CB, we can let me. I'm gonna go walk him because he's anxious. But they won't be there very long. They'll get. They'll get. Uh, and that's great for the shorts. Every year they completely delist uh, these stocks, and then their OTC has uh, three or four levels, and one of the levels is. There's no requirements, but it's really the pinkest of pink sheets. And um, you still have some requirements, but it's de minimis. No, they won't. They won't. Um, uh, it probably won't be there very long, but then I'm reading what you're saying on the OTC. There, let's talk about that tomorrow. There's three or four levels of the OTC. Big Al is being great. Big Al is being great. Bottom line is act while no one else is acting. All right, Big Al, I'm, yeah, you probably have more to say. Um, here, what I'm going to do while I get ready to go outside is let you...
Okay, Big Al. God, Nunez is pretty smart. Just want your extra time and your kiss. I should have Big Al on to tell you guys to, to answer all the questions. Um, Big Al's done a great job here. Um, I personally think that's awesome. But we we I'll give Big Al the floor sometime to explain to you guys how to do this. His biggest thing is to get it done now. I tend to agree with that. A lot of people are waiting for SEC approval to do anything. They kind of do it now. Or January. I, I'm, I'm sure over the holidays you don't need to do anything if, if you're busy. Anyway, peace, love, happiness. I wish everyone well. I, I If you think of it, continued prayers for Jenny L. Um, but also prayers for peace around the world. And uh, uh, I hope each of you are starting to see your family and friends and that you have warm uh, friendship and love around you for the holidays. And if, if um, you own them, I hope your dogs and cats greet you with love. Um, so. We'll uh, reconvene tomorrow. Cheers.